If they do, their names and faces will be added to our World Series picture album, whose pages are filled with 80 years of history. And which team will be added to that montage for this year? The Tigers are poised to claim that page in the World Series scrapbook, leading three games to one. And history does not offer much encouragement to the Padres. On 29 previous occasions, teams have trailed 3-1 in World Series play. Only four times have they been able to climb out of that hole and win. The 1925 Pirates, the 58 Yankees, the 68 Tigers against the St. Louis Cardinals, as Mickey Lolich won three times, including a win over Bob Gibson in the final contest, and more recently in 1979, the Pirates against the Orioles. On the other hand, the Padres are no strangers to miracles. They were down 2-0 to the Cubs, rallied 1-3 straight, took the playoffs. In pursuit of miracle number two, they send Mark Thurman to the mound this afternoon, the left-hander who lost the first game, the Tigers counter with Dan Petrie, the right-hander who was saddled with the loss in game two. When we return, Len Berman will talk with the Padres' Steve Garvey. The World Series pregame show is brought to you by Delta Fawcett. We're first because we last. And by American Airlines, something special in the air. The beauty of a Delta faucet is, when it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. Its washerless design helps keep it from dripping, so it lasts and lasts and lasts. Delta faucet, we're first because we last. If you've got what it takes and really care, there's a special kind of life you'll want to share. Serving your country is a special call. It's good for you, it's good for all. Not all who drive fit the bill. It calls for brains, it calls for skill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. High tech and the services go hand in hand. It's a whole new world. You're in demand in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll move up, you'll feel proud. You'll stand out above the crowd in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. But most of all, you'll earn the respect of the people and country you're there to protect. In the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, it's a great place to start. At first glance, all airlines may appear to be the same, but one gives you a special way to fly. An airline so large it carries over 30 million people a year, yet so personalized you can reserve your seat a year in advance. We have the seat you want, Mr. Martin. In a world of airlines, one airline, American Airlines, can make your trip something special. Welcome aboard. Something special in the air. We're in Detroit, and we're getting ready for Game 5 of the World Series. I'm with Steve Garvey, and Steve, you were here before, down in the World Series when you played for the Dodgers, down in the playoffs to the Cubs. 
what is the mood of this club? Can it be done again? Well, again, this team has always had a good perspective on who it is and what the job is at hand. And, of course, today our backs are up against the wall. It's not the ultimate position for us. The difference between the playoff and this situation is we have one game here, uh, which it can be clinched by the home team, Detroit. So today's an ultimate game for us. But the guys are ready. Uh, they're loose, and we'll just try to be aggressive. Do you get the feeling that your club is prepared to admit the other club is better, or is the mood still that, you know, we just haven't shown our true colors yet? Well, we respect them as we did before the series started. We do today. If they beat us, then they will be world champions. If they don't, then we will be. But again, it's, it's a mutual respect. But we just haven't played up to the expectations or capabilities. And maybe uh, it's their pitching, maybe it's been our inefficiencies, but all in all, it's been so close it could be either way now. All right, Steve. Best of luck, and maybe we will go back to San Diego. I hope so. Thanks, man. We'll continue with more of our pregame report from Detroit. Game five of the World Series in just a minute. People think I'm a tough guy. <laughs> maybe. But I'm not stupid. I wear the right gear. And I'm careful out there. I take care of myself out here, too. Because on this field... Things happen even faster. You've got to protect yourself. Never drink when you ride. Think safety. <laughs> you never know what you're going to run into. Winners ride safely. An important reminder from Honda. What a pennant race. Bottom of the ninth. Three men on two outs. Full count on the batter. Season's riding on one swing of the bat. What a pressure cooker. For that championship anxious upset stomach that comes with a thumping head. There are the medicines of Alka-Seltzer. The payoff pitch! Power that ball is going! Going! Goal! Alka-Seltzer. For these symptoms of stress that can come from success. Welcome back to Detroit in Game 5 of the World Series. You know, for every name that now lives in World Series legend, there is usually another name. That of an unsung hero, without whose deeds the scene could never have been set for the moments we remember best. Here's Joe Garagiola. The spotlight always shines brightest on the players during the World Series. Make a great play, hit a home run, pitch a great game. It seems like you're remembered forever. But what about those guys who grabbed that brass ring for a short time? Can you remember some? I can. Like 1946, it was the Cardinals and the Red Sox in the World Series. And there I am on the right, my first and last World Series, Kurowski in the middle, and that Slaughter on the left. And Slaughter is the one that everybody remembers because in game seven, there he goes from first base and he scores all the way. He runs right through the stop sign and he scores the winning run. But what about Harry Walker? Harry Walker's the man who got the hit that scored Slaughter. Speed is something that excites anybody. And, uh, of course, Harry Walker was not quite as known as well as Enos Slaughter, and that makes a difference, too. It just so happened that I led the thing in the hitting with 4-12 and led it in RBIs. And the last game, we only got four runs, and I drove in two and scored one and drove in the winning run. But, as you say, there was not much said about it because of Slaughter's running. But, of course, if you don't hit the ball, he could run all day. It wouldn't have scored, would he? <laughs> 1960, Pirates and the Yankees. And will we ever forget Bill Mazeroski's dramatic home run? Bottom of the ninth, and that climaxed the series. The Pirates were the world champions for the first time in 35 years. But it was Hal Smith's home run in the bottom of the eighth that put the Pirates ahead. But that got lost in time. We thought we had won the World Series in my home run. The people on the bench, the people in the stands, all of us just went bananas. Then they tied the game up the, the top of the ninth, and then Mazeroski hit the home run, and it's hard to forget that. 1975, Boston Red Sox, Cincinnati Reds. You talk about that World Series, they all remember Carlton Fisk's home run. But Carlton remembers the home run that set it up. It was hit by Bernie Carbo. The 12th inning home run sort of took the uh, flare or the punch out of Bernie's home run, but uh, his was equally as important. If anyone comes up to me and they start talking about baseball, the thing they talk about is the 1975 World Series. The two pinch hit home runs I hit. Deep center field, way back, way back. We're tied up. 
For me to go up to the plate and to hit a pinch hit home run is unbelievable. It's just like a dream come true. It's like things that I've dreamed when I was a little boy, dreaming about playing in the World Series. Uh, I think every kid dreams about that. Three unsung heroes. Maybe we had to be reminded, but I'm sure they remember them well. Thanks, Joe. Now, don't go too far away. We'll put you and Vin Scully to work in just a few moments. Quick weather report. Drizzle earlier today. Overcast now, no rain falling. Does it end here, or do we go back to the West Coast? The answer next on NBC. Tonight on Night Rider, a girl's in trouble, and Michael and Kit go undercover on the gridiron to save her. I really don't enjoy this game. Make some extra points tonight. Monday, it's Family Ties Bloopers with Michael Gross, Practical Jokes on Pop Star Cindy Lauper and Knott's Landing's Joan Van Ark. Plus, animals just want to have fun, too. Monday. People are running from bank to bank, looking for the perfect CD. Someone should tell all these people that there's a place that offers six-month CDs at rates higher than most banks. California Federal. High rates, short term, long on security. One phone call will convince all of you when it comes to CDs, it pays to check with us. How much of my assets should be in cash? How do I know when my investments are working for me? How can the investment that was right for my neighbor not be right for me? The more serious you are as an investor, the more questions you have to ask. So if you've been asking yourself these questions, talk with us and invest your time before you invest your money. Shearson Lehman American Express and the Serious Investor. Minds over money. The $100,000 final, 6.30 tonight on Name That Tune. NBC Sports presents... The 1984 World Series. Today, Game 5, the San Diego Padres versus the Detroit Tigers. Brought to you by Miller High Life, the best beer for the best time of the day. Welcome to Miller Time. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Wagner, the right tool for painting. And by the makers of Right Guard. You work hard. You need Right Guard. The fog persists in Detroit. A 30% chance of showers. But nothing will dim the enthusiasm of the fans inside Tiger Stadium. The site of Game 5 of the 1984 World Series. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola. Well, here we are, Game 5, and the Padres up against it. Well, are up against it, but actually it's the easiest day of the year for the managers on both sides in regards to one thing, the message they have to get across to their players. Sparky is simply, hey, we win one, it's all over. And I'll quote the players. Larry Hernan, who hardly says anything, said that the year is down to one game. Well, to pursue that line of thinking, of course, I can see Dick Williams pitching everybody at any time, but not Sparky, because he still has to remember and has predicted it still would go seven games. Well, he's going to have his ace ready if it does go to the seventh game, Morris, but uh, as you say, uh, Dick will pitch everybody, including Ballard Smith, Jack McKeon, but they know what they have to do, and the goose, it took one of the veterans to put it in focus. He said, hey, let's not try to win three games with one game, which he simply means Means let's play our normal game today. Well, it'll be Dan Petrie and Mark Thurman. Right now, let's go to public address announcer John Bell for the introduction of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, the colors are being presented today by a joint color guard of United States and Canadian Armed Forces. We ask now that you rise to honor America as the University of Michigan Men's Glee Club, under the direction of Dr. Patrick Gardner, sings our national anthem.
Boy, our heartiest congratulations to the University of Michigan Glee Club. The men's group, what a magnificent rendition of our national anthem. We'll be back. Starting lineups coming up. And the pregame notes right after this message. Mondale thinks if you put in more overtime, you could pay for his promises with your taxes. What do you think? Right. Walter Mondale thinks you can squeeze more tax money out of your budget. What do you think? Walter Mondale thinks if you stay out in the fields more, you can pay for his taxes. What do you think? Vote for President Reagan. You have better things to do with your money than pay for Walter Mondale's promises. America's presidents, America's game. Join in the commemoration of a grand old tradition by getting your World Series program. Send a $5 check or money order to World Series program, P.O. Box 8484, Trenton, New Jersey, 08650. That's World Series program, P.O. Box 8484, Trenton, New Jersey, 08650. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, we draw your attention to the commissioner's box at the home plate end of the first base dugout for today's ceremonial first pitch. Our first ball pitcher was an outstanding American League player who was at the pinnacle of his career as a third baseman for the Detroit Tigers. His accomplishments won him election to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1983. We welcome as our first ball thrower, Mr. George Kell. Mr. Cal will receive the baseball from a former college first baseman. It's with pride that baseball welcomes to the World Series the Vice President of the United States, the Honorable George Bush. Gentlemen, the first ball, please. So the pregame festivities are over. Lance Parrish receiving the toss from George Kell, who received the ball from the Vice President of the United States. And now we get to the serious matter at hand. And first of all, let's take a look at the San Diego lineup. The first feeling you have when you look at it is Dick Williams has decided to stay with the girl he took to the dance. There have been a lot of conversation about maybe with a slumping left fielder, Carmelo Martinez, and a slumping Bobby Brown and Sutter, maybe he would switch and put Tim Flannery at second base and move Alan Wiggins to left field. But Dick Williams has decided, I stay with the crew that got me here, and there they are. Martinez in left, then you have Gary Templin hitting eighth at shortstop, and Bobby Brown in center field. On the mound, Right-hander Dan Petrie, an 18-game winner during the regular year, and let's check the scouting report on him, and here's Joe. He's got a fastball, a slider. He can run it in. He runs it away, and like everybody on his ball club, he'll give you the split-fingered fastball, but it's an occasional one. I think in order to be in a Detroit Tiger uniform and be a pitcher, you better throw that thing. I would think. Well, he's going to be throwing it. Alan Wiggins, Tony Gwynn, and Steve Garvey in that order. When Wiggins was hitting and Darrell Evans was the third baseman, Evans, you remember, stayed almost on the edge of the grass. We'll see how far in Marty Castillo comes, because Castillo, when he played, came about almost halfway to home plate. 
Wiggins waiting for things to settle down and we'll get this ball game underway. Petrie and Paris, an infield of Evans, Whitaker, Trammell, and Castillo, and the outfield of Herndon, Lemon, and Gibson. And here we go. The first pitch of game five. Wiggs hitting 353 in the series. Ball one. umpire Riley Harvey Barnett Fremming and Garcia on the line one and one and line drive right on by Petrie and through in the center field that is Wiggins style as he hit it right back up the middle and I think Ben you can almost as we watch the replay of him just serving it right back up the middle he doesn't swing hard Petrie just a little bit late with his glove I think it's almost like the first game Wiggins is going to send that message that I'm going to steal to get our ball club going and they do need somebody to light that fire and I'm sure we can look for a pitch out with Wiggins on the first base with Craig and Lance Parrish. Dick Williams hoping to get a jump this Padre ball club has been behind from the fifth inning in every game. Now Petrie is very tough on base running. In fact more have been caught than have succeeded against him. He is one and one in that area in the series and Wiggins no doubt will try to test him. That's in there. Tony Gwynn waiting, a patient hitter, to see what's up with Wiggins. That's the good hitter giving him at least one strike. Now he's on his own. Gwynn is, can just do whatever he wants. He's hitting 357 in the series. 0 oh and 1. Petrie is considered an excellent fielder and very good at turning the double play. Wiggins settling in as if he's ready to push off over there. And they pitch out. That could have been a deep just to convince Parrish to waste a pitch. I think, well, well, he does that pretty much all the time. That's very soft around first base. They're all digging in there. Uh, what these managers do is pick a particular pitch, forget strategy. They, they're trying to think, well, what will he throw? If he throws a slow pitch, I'll run him. One and one. Hit foul down the left field line out of play. That was a most important pitch. Had it been ball two, then the Padres would have figured that would negate a pitch out, and you could bet Wiggins would be going two balls, one strike. But it's the other way around now. One ball and two strikes. Well, there's a lot of cat and mouse going on. Chances are 99, 100 that he's not going to be pitching out here, but maybe Lance says, hey, he's thinking that I will. If they're picking particular pitches. One and two. He goes. And it's fouled away. They're, the strategy, forget it. It's just uh, they're trying to think of what the other fellow's uh, going to do, and they act accordingly. Uh, one ball, two strikes. You figure he's going to waste the pitch. Petrie went out after him. Gwynn, of course, with two strikes, has to really take a hack at it. And Wiggins taking off a base hit. He'd have been in good shape. Interesting combination. You have a very fast runner. And remember, Gwynn, the toughest man to strike out in the major leagues, although Wilcox struck him out. In Milt's game. One and two. He goes. And it's chased and missed. The throw hits the runner. Goes into center field. Juggled by center field 11. And Wiggins is to third. So they got more out of that than they could certainly ask for. And they're looking for any kind of a break. And that could be it. And don't think the Tigers aren't thinking about it. It's a tough pitch for Parrish to handle. Low inside curveball. He's screened by Wynn, who swings. The throw is a little bit to the second base side in the center field as it was sailing away. And Wiggins ends up at third. You'll see the throw kind of sail. Now Steve Garvey is asked to do what the Padres have been unable to do. Get a lead. The infield halfway. High slider, ball one, one and oh. Roger Craig says Dan Petrie has the best slider in America. One ball, no strikes. Dan has a California flavor to his background. He was born in Palo Alto. 
little number and the count one and one. There are situations that come up where pitchers have to do particular things just like hitters and right now the battle is for Garvey to get the ball in the air. Petrie's got to keep that ball on the ground or go for the strikeout. ERA whatever you want to go the yardstick they use for pitchers is how good a pitcher is he with the man on third and less than two outs. Garvey has one RBI in his last 64 World Series at bats. And he hits it sharply to Whitaker. Wiggins to the plate. He is out at the plate. He never tagged it. He never tagged the plate. Watch it. Parrish has got it blocked. He slides past the plate. He never tagged home plate. They're going to argue. And Parrish knew it, so he went back to get him. Paul Rungi says the tag was high up on the leg. He never, ta he never tagged the plate. He never tagged him. And Rungi just said to Dick Williams and gestured to Dick Williams' left thigh. He didn't have to tag him again. Well, he may not have had to tag him according to Rungi, but according to Parrish, he knows he didn't tag him. You don't go after a guy if you tagged him. Right, and yet the plate umpire indicated he did tag him on the leg going by. One way or the other, Wiggins is out. Garvey has not had the chance to pick him up, and the Padres suffer a severe setback and right at the outset. Wiggins a race 4-2. Garvey standing at first on the fielder's choice, and Greg Nettles a batter. Nettles has not been hitting. Only two hits in the series. He's walked four times. Now ball. Oh and one. Now Roger Craig is going out to talk to Petrie. When Dan pitched the last time, we went into that long and rather heartwarming story about their father-son relationship. And we don't know, of course, depending upon the series and the future, whether this is going to be Roger's last game or not. Well, he keeps slipping down. It was 90% sure in September, and now it's down to 70%. And now, he, after the series, he's going to sit down and talk to his wife, and they're going to make a decision. I think what he was trying to do was to settle him down and use that baseball expression, stay within yourself. Don't try to overthrow it. If he tries to go fastball against Nettles, he may be in for some serious trouble. So Nettles up there with a the count 0 and 1, two out in the first inning. Wiggins out at the plate on the ground ball by Garvey, and Petrie is ready. Off speed for a strike. So if he was overthrowing, he came back with a great call, the off speed pitch, and in the strike zone. Well, we've been saying it all along, and it's no big secret. Nettles is a dead fastball hitter. Dead is right. He has 20 home runs during the regular year. Just show it to him now, but keep it a yard outside. Ball one. Darrell Evans is not holding the bag on Garvey. They don't expect him to do any running. The first wave of the day starts in center field and works its way towards the right field foul pole. He could have thrown that away. If that were a fastball, I don't think Harris could have gotten to it. But it was a high change, and Lance was able to catch up to it. He'd have thrown that fastball there. I think Craig would have might have been out there again, yeah. or at least waiting for him at the top step. Here's his pitch of decision. He wants it to happen right here on two balls and two strikes. Little ground ball to Whitaker, and the Padres come up empty. did touch home plate scoreless at the end of half an inning i'm holding an epson printer the single largest selling brand of computer printers in the united states today we're talking state of the art but are we talking fragile it's made by epson sensitive a printer that can't take the grind this is an epson why do you think so many people are buying an epson to go with their apples and ibms Tell them. 
McDonald's presents the 15 hardest words to say. You all beef patty, special soft lettuce, cheese, pickles, sardines on a sesame. Pickles, onions, on a sesame seed. Then you got to take a bite of one. It's a good time. It's for the great taste. Oh, Mitchell. All beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame seed. Bun, bun, bun. From Newport News to Newport Beach. From the Australian Outback to Abilene. More men face the day with Gillette Good News than any other disposable razor. Because Gillette twin blades shave better than one. And for men all over the world, the name Gillette stands for shaving. And Good News stands alone as the world's number one disposable razor. Now more good news for a better shave. Good News Pivot, only from Gillette. From the World Series to the presidential debates, NBC News is there. When you want news from across the nation and throughout the world, turn to NBC Nightly News. Here's the way the Tigers stack up offensively. Lou Whitaker at second base and Alan Trammell at shortstop. Kirk Gibson in right field and Lance Parrish behind the plate. Larry Herndon is in left field with the left hander going. Barbara Garbay is the DH. Chet Lemon in center field. Darrell Evans will be at first base and Marty Castillo at third. And on the mound, trying to throw a blanket over them, left-hander Mark Thurman, who lasted five innings against the Tigers, the longest for any San Diego starter. And remember that he was the one who really hung in there. We use the expression junkyard dog. That's what he is. He hangs in there tough. He's got good control, good motion. He's got an average, maybe below average fastball. Same can be set for his curveball, but his change of pace is an excellent pitch. He turns it over, it acts like a screwball, and it sets up the other hitters. But the key to him, Ben, is what Terry Kennedy says. He knows his own ability. And I might add, if I were catching, I'd walk out and say, watch the first pitch. This guy's been jumping on it. I'll tell you, he's got reason to jump. Lou Whitaker is the happiest guy in town. His wife, Crystal, delivered a baby daughter, Sarah, seven pounds, six ounces this morning. And he takes a strike. Mark Thurman, he's 28 out of Houston, Texas. And look at those numbers. Aren't they shocking? The starters, ERA 11, and the relievers, a third of a run. In fact, the only run given up by the relief pitchers is when Kirk Gibson was hit by Greg Booker. That's the only run. You remember he hit him with the base loaded. One and one. In there. The key with Thurman all day will be keep track of the count. If he's ahead of the hitter, he's got a good shot at it. His control is paramount importance to him. He's not strong enough to blow you away. Line to right field, and here we go again. Yesterday's hero, although that's not fair, he's been a hero ever since he's been in Detroit. Look at those numbers. So Whitaker is at first. That base hit was for baby Sarah, I guess, and for his wife Crystal. Alan Trammell is hitting 563. And you have to give hitting coach Gates Brown a lot of credit. He's the one who talked to Trammell about keeping that left shoulder tucked in. Drive with it. Ball one. That wasn't much of a one and two fastball. I was surprised he, he was up with it, and it was a great pitch for Whitaker to handle. He's got to spot the ball. He's not going to overpower you. He doesn't uh, he doesn't like pitch outs a whole lot either. Many left-handers don't like it because they're looking at the runner. And they say we can keep him close enough. That doesn't mean Whitaker's not going to run because Trammell, even though he showed some power yesterday, they can put a play on. And yet we all have known of left-hand pitchers who hate to throw to first. Breaking ball in there, one and one. Remember Kirk Simmons, of course. He never threw to first. He just tried to fake you with his eyes, I guess. <laughs> he, he never threw. One and one. They count Alan Trammell. Trammell, who had a great September, he hit over 400. 
It's a big chopper slowly. Templeton goes to second in time. Boy, what a split second decision. And he was correct. He really had something on that. And Wiggins was there. He didn't take for granted that Templeton would go to first base. He threw that ball hard. Got him. You know, as Kirk Gibson comes up to the plate, somewhere down around Tampa, Florida, watching the game, I'm sure, is an outfielder who played on the 44 Cardinals with Stan Musial, won the World Series, Danny Litwiler. Sure, I know Danny. Well, Danny, among other things, was the baseball coach at Michigan State. He convinced Steve Garvey and gave him a scholarship to go to state to play baseball. He talked Kirk Gibson into playing baseball. He was a football player. And I'm sure Litwiler is sitting back saying, my boys are doing well. Danny, good right-hand hitter. He also coached Dick Hauser at Florida State. And there it goes for Michigan State and all of Tigerdom. hit Sherry trying to settle everybody down all he's really trying to do is is the equivalent of a roll call see who's here and who isn't hurt and who can continue the battle Gibson swing and watch the reaction
Look at Trasuski. He's as calm as could be standing there in the first base coaching box. He just and wanted to make sure he tagged first. First and third. Chet Lemon hitting 214. Parrish down the line from third, Herndon from first. One and oh. I'm sure Sparky knows what he's doing, but this is not the lineup that we received officially before the start of the game. I can't believe Lemon is hitting out of turn, but this isn't the way the lineup was printed. They had Garbay hitting in front of Lemon, but here's Lemon with Garbay on deck. Well, if it's wrong, Dick Williams will let him hit before he says anything. Right. There's a base hit. Thurman is just about done. Harris scores 3 0 Detroit. Here comes Dick Williams. begins here, where Miller High Life waits for the finest ingredients to reach their golden best. Then we go beyond ingredients and use the finest brewing skills, making sure Miller High Life contains no additives and no preservatives. So come your Miller time, you get nothing but the fresh, smooth taste of just pure beer. Welcome to Miller High Life. Welcome to Miller time. That's me, in front on the left. Some things change. Some things don't. Like my brokerage firm all these years, E.F. Hutton. Today they've got zero coupon municipal bonds. They grow at a fixed rate, so you know exactly what you'll get when you need it. Tax-free. They call them zero coupons. But it's the same sound advice Hutton has always given me and my family. And while some things change, oh, some things don't. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. At first glance, all airlines may appear to be the same, but one gives you a special way to fly. An airline so large it carries over 30 million people a year, yet so personalized you can reserve your seat a year in advance. We have the seat you want, Mr. Martin. In a world of airlines, one airline, American Airlines, can make your trip something special. Welcome aboard. Something special in the air. Dinner X versus Head and Shoulders. On this side, I can feel a tingling sensation. And this side, it's there's not much happening. Look what you use. Dinner X. Unlike Head and Shoulders, Dinner X adds an extra anti-itch medicine and conditioner, too. Goodbye, Head and Shoulders. Hello, Dinner X. Bill Evans can't breathe. <laughs> Would you try Dristan long-lasting nasal spray? I'll try anything. Can you breathe now? Yeah, I think so. Prove it. <laughs> Prove it to yourself. Dristan goes to work in seconds, lasts all day. Sparky Anderson finds himself, as usual, out in front. In fact, the Tigers have scored in the first inning in six of their seven games. By the way, we were talking about Sparky and the lineup, and they tell us that just a few minutes before the start of the game, he opted to change the lineup. So there's no problem about having anybody hitting out of turn. Andy Hawkins making his appearance. And if San Diego starters thought things couldn't get any worse with an ERA of 11, as you saw it did, it's ballooned up over 13. At first and second, you have Lemon and Herndon. And here is Garbay. And the runners go. The bat flies and the tag at third in time to get Herndon. I'm not so sure there wouldn't have been maybe an interference complaint by Nettles at third base on the play because the bat really went flying towards him. You'll see it. That's a, he had that with a broken bat. This just slipped out of his hands. Nettles was there and makes the easy tag. 
So that slows down the momentum. Had that been successful, it would have been a definite feeling that the Tigers are just running San Diego right out of the ballpark. That's a big out to slow them down temporarily. So Barbaro Garvey with a count 0 and 1, two down, and there goes the pitch to the screen. Lemon to third and holding. Well, Hawkins has a good fastball and a good hard slider that looked like it might have been the slider. Uh, Kennedy tried to backhand the ball, didn't shift the block, it got by him, and wild pitch is the way they score it. Hawkins had worked eight innings and struck out three and walked three in his earlier duties. Kennedy's a big guy, and he just did, couldn't get over there, shift that way, tried to backhand it, unsuccessful, and you see what happened. The well, Garvey trying to pick up Chet Lemon. Three nothing Tigers. First inning. Fastball and a good one. One and two. Barbaro Garvey, part of the Cuba flotilla. The DH in the World Series and very hungry, as you can see. 0 for 11. 1 and 2. Kennedy started to walk away, but it was high. Oddly enough, the Tiger DHs are struggling. They are 1 for 16. But it still could be the team with the lowest DH batting average will win the series for the first time. Popped up, and it'll be Wiggins. But the Tigers get three. Kirk Gibson's two-run home run ignited the torch, and at the end of an inning, the Tigers three and the Padres nothing. Welcome. You work day and night to give a parched land a drink of water. Now comes your time. To Miller time. And Miller time means it's time for the best beer you can find. Miller High Life. Bring your thirsty self right here. The rich, smooth taste of Miller beer is what you have in mind. Welcome to Miller High Life. Welcome to Miller Time. Who has created a new dawn of performance, versatility, and simplicity? Only RCA. Introducing the full-spectrum video monitors, all high-performance televisions, and more. Designed to get the most from your video components. You simply plug in video games, your stereo, and your VCR for audio and video excitement that's as different as night and day. The full-spectrum video monitors, only from RCA. Technology that excites the senses. For Mike Blum, international consultant, headaches come with the territory. It's a monstrous headache. It isn't just a headache. I'd love to have some aspirin. Today, we'd like you to try extra strength Tylenol. It works without aspirin. It's got to get rid of this headache. No headache, and I have uh, no stomach problems. I'm uh, sold on extra strength Tylenol. Extra strength Tylenol. You can't buy a more potent pain reliever without a prescription. Now Tylenol introduces caplets, specially coated and shaped, so they're easy to swallow. New extra strength Tylenol caplets. Wake up to a new day with the morning sun. Get the spirit of adventure a man should have on. Stetson Cologne, Stetson Fit. Comfortable and daring for the rugged soul. Masculine and sharing, confident and bold. Stetson Cologne, Stetson Fit. Cause there's a little bit of Stetson in every man. for Kirk Gibson and his two-run home run in the first inning. If I may make a somewhat cynical observation, however, sick transit Gloria. And the Latins knew what they were talking about. All he has to do is talk to Mickey Lolich. Lolich won three World Series games for the Tigers. He was the talk of the town in 68. Mickey Lolich is in the last row of the upper deck down the left field line and can't see the pitcher's mound. One away. Another note about an early departure by a San Diego starter. Thurman was chased so quickly. It's the earliest exit by a starter in a World Series since 1970. 
when Reb Russell did not retire a batter for the White Sox. And here is Kurt Bavakwa. He's had a big series, as you're well aware, after hitting only 200 during the regular season. Fastball, 1 and 0. Dan Petrie trying to make Sparky Anderson one for the books. Chopper foul. You know, ball clubs got scouting reports, obviously, with advanced scouts, but it was interesting. Jack Morris, when I asked him about the slow curve he threw to Bavacqua yesterday, he said, hey, I played with him. I was on the same club. I pitched against him. I know what he was looking for, and I thought I'd throw that slow curve. He might even get hurt swinging at it. <laughs> right. That was the great line. He said great line. He'll hurt himself. One and one. Fastball. So he's coming after him with the heat and the count two balls one strike. Bavacqua played with a pretty good ball player in high school. Steve Carlton down in North Miami found a way. Kurt played second base in those days and needless to say Carlton was the pitcher. Two and two to Kurt Bavacqua one out in the second inning Tigers three Padres nothing. There aren't very many teams to come back down three games to one in the World Series. Two and two. Line to left field, but Larry Herndon is there. Although he didn't appear too sure of it. The lights are on. We saw Bobby Brown hesitate. Take a look at this and try to catch it yourself. This ball kind of knuckleballs out there. Sometimes the ball will do that, and Herndon is really fighting that ball. You can see he just wasn't that sure. A couple other places he had rather been, I think. Larry has cut down his errors in left field considerably. A year ago, he made 15. He only had three errors this year. Here is Carmelo Martinez, and it's been on the job training for him. Look at that. Seven strikeouts, one for 13. As we said at the start of the telecast, it's been a little surprising that Dick Williams stayed with Martinez and Brown all the way instead of perhaps putting Flannery at second and Wiggins in the outfield. But Dick stand with his club. Doing all. He looks like he's moved a little closer to the plate. Three runs, five hits for the Tigers. Now no he's runs, up, one man. hit. Yeah, look at there. Opened up. That's the thing he was trying to get over, you know, the stop opening up. It's interesting that he got there and it looked like he wasn't sure of himself when he got in the batter's box. And Lance Parrish is going to go out there now and make the great speech that all catchers make to pitchers. Hey, you've got a three-run lead. Don't get smart. Just throw strikes. You think that moving around by Martinez is an indication of what's going on inside, that he might be a little edgy? Martinez? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, he's had so much pressure. A youngster. Let's take a look from this side now. See whether he opens up again. There he goes. Yep, he just opened. Three and zero on the corner. So he open up. They eat the inside corner. Now here's the pitch that he's got to really take a good whack at right here. Set himself and just nail it. And he hits it into left field for a base hit. Over to get it is Herndon. So Carmelo Martinez. Gets his first hit to the outfield in the series. In fact, his first hit to the outfield since the second game of the league championship against the Cubs. Really see the seams look like a slider just stayed there. There's Gary Templeton. Ball one. In Petrie's other game, when Templeton was the base runner, Dan Petrie balked. He won't have to worry very much about Martinez leading by three. They're not holding him on. That's a strike. Templeton has made up his mind, it seems like, that the fastball from the middle of the plate out, he's going to let him have it until he's got two strikes, but from the middle of the plate in, he's going to get a good hack. All five of Templeton's hits have come left-handed. Two and one. On deck is Bobby Brown. And of course, Brown 
is the hungriest hitter in town. He is 0 for 13. Two and one. Two and two. Ball looked like it was out of the strike zone, but it was the only one that he'd gotten so far that looked like it was from the inside to play it in. So if nothing else, if you're behind that plate, that tells you that Templeton's really got it zeroed in. And if he's going to go after a ball out of the zone, left-handed, it figures to be low. Two and two. Wouldn't go on that one. It stayed outside and high. So with two down, a full count, Martinez will be going. And the crowd a little uneasy because in a small ballpark, a three-run lead can dissipate in a hurry, especially if Brown represents a tying run coming up. Martinez goes, and there's a ground ball to Evans. He'll do it himself. No runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of an inning and a half, the Tigers flee. The Padres very unhappy. It's so smooth it won't even scratch this delicate surface. The new Papermate AccuPoint roller pen with a stainless steel point and metal rolling ball for remarkably smooth fine point writing. The new Papermate AccuPoint. Gillette Foamy Gel. The gel that gives you more. More lubricants. Better beard setup. More lubricants. For closeness and comfort, get Gillette Foamy Gel. The gel that gives you more. Communication. Communication separates the serious investor from an investor. Communication with a financial consultant about what makes you feel comfortable and uncomfortable. This communication will ultimately determine how satisfied you'll be, which is why we recommend you invest your time with us before you invest your money with us. Shearson Lehman American Express and the serious investor. Minds over money. I'm 32 years old, and I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults are coming forward to challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid's cereal. I know there's a tiger in the box. I like the taste, okay? Because you love them as a kid doesn't mean you can't love them as an adult. One day, our neighbors saw the package on the table. And we don't even have children. With that extra crunch in milk, that frosting just right, that taste is great as ever. <laughs> well, they've always been my favorite. So dig in. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. Tonight, the epic of V continues with the final battle. And then the countdown begins for the thrilling premiere of V, the series. Well, Joe, what might be considered a thread of a story has instead become a main artery. The inability of the starting pitcher of San Diego to even be around to be introduced. And it makes it tough on the catcher because you know what his best pitch is going across the foul lines, but you have to find it out there. Kennedy hasn't had much of a chance. He's, they're out of there before he knows what's happened. Well, we'll take a look and see if Sparky Anderson will become the first man in history to manage championship teams in both leagues. There he is. George's daughter, Shirley, married in March. And Papa's going to be delighted to spend part of his share picking up the wedding. And Dale Evans starting for Detroit. Ball one. Evans, Castillo, and Whitaker against Andy Hawkins. High fly ball into deep right field. Gwynn, however, is going to make the catch. One away. That is a gray overcast day in Detroit you see Gwynn looking up a second time the lights have been on oh they turned them on an hour before the start of the game at least doesn't look nearly as ominous on that kind of a shot you get more feeling now Marty Castillo ball one one of the unsung players to inherit a hero's role when he hit his home run the other night away you know and I look at the Detroit Tigers and I guess because Sparky's the manager some people think of them as the Cincinnati Reds but the more you look at this ball club the more you think of the Oakland A's a bunt foul out of play the Bays of let's say 72 73 and 74 they had three big pitchers 
Vita Blue, Catfish Hunter, and Ken Holzman. They were a team that didn't hit well. In fact, in three straight, their highest batting average in the World Series was 212 as a team batting, but when they hit, they hurt. And you remember the 74 World Series, and Joe, you probably called the play. Remember when Bill Buckner was thrown out on a great relay from Reggie Jackson to Green to Bando. And it reminds you of the Bavacqua play being cut down in San Diego. Basic baseball, they had it. Unintentionally fouled away. Still two and two. If it appears that Hawkins is working in a hurry, that's his style now. They want him to get the ball and come at the hitter, not nibble and just fool around. Make him hit your good stuff. Hit it on the fists and hit it foul. In talking about teams trying to come back when they're down three games to one, both managers here know that feeling. In 1967, Dick Williams was managing the Boston Red Sox. They were down three games to one. They won two and then lost the championship to Bob Gibson and the Cardinals. And on the other side of the field, Sparky knows the feeling. Another foul ball. Sparky Anderson in 1972 his Reds were down three games to one they battled back to get even only to lose to of all people Dick Williams and the A's. You remember we were talking a couple of days ago about Sparky Anderson and Billy Consolo playing on the American Legion team that won the championship here in 51. You know there's somebody else in uniform today who played in that game. Deacon Jones of the Padres hit a grand slam home run in that game for American Legion ball. There's Deacon. He got the nickname Deacon because his dad was a Deacon in the Baptist Church. He was the American Legion player of the year in 51. He hit his first inning grand slam only to have Sparky's team win it 11 7 strike to Castillo. And Marty says caramba. Two down. You love that as a catcher. Low fastball. If he tries to hit it that over the plate, it had to be a strike. In fact, too close to tell, I'll tell you that. Here's Lou Whitaker, the brand new daddy. Ball one. I said tell, take is what I meant. Too close to take. And you got how? two strikes, you got to whack. Like every ball player, you take, you're fooled, so you go to first, right? Right. <laughs> High pop fly. Back a second. Temple and digging, but Brown coming. Bobby Brown. And the Tigers go quietly in the second, but they already had a belly full. At the end of two, three nothing Detroit. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. A passion. The revenge. The epic love story AD, the television event of 1985, coming on NBC. For the next 30 seconds, Burger King will conduct a test of your appetite alert system. Right now, Burger King restaurants in your area are offering the King Combo, a juicy flame broiled Whopper, large order of crisp golden fries, and an ice cold Pepsi. The King Combo, all for a special price. To complete this test, please report to Burger King. Only a dollar ninety nine. Prices may vary. Which of these oils gives you the best engine protection under the toughest driving conditions? Sub-zero cold or blazing heat? This one. Mobile One. Now, Mobile One and our other fine motor oils come in this easy pour resealable plastic container. Mobile Motor Oil. Now it's easier to use than ever. By the time I hit the field. Yellow, yellow. I've already worked overtime. Studying films of the guy across the line. Four hours a night. Because I believe in doing my homework. And people wonder how come I'm always in the right place at the right time. Sports highlights with Andy Lascano tonight at 6 on News 4 LA. Today's game is brought to you by 
Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. The Goodyear Blimp America from Houston, Texas. Pilot Captain John Moran from Spring, Texas. The stewardess Mickey Whitman. The America, one of only four Goodyear Blimps in the world. Bobby Brown, Alan Wiggins, and Tony Gwynn. And the at-bats for Bobby Brown have become a litany of frustration. He is 0 for 13 as he chops it behind the bag to Trammell and beats it out. So Bobby finally breaks through. Trammell kind of let the ball come to him. He played it very easy. And it's a tribute to Bobby Brown, who's had a tough time, but he just kept hustling. You see Cram uh, Trammell waiting for it, and Brown didn't put his head down as if to say, well, another out, when is something good going to happen? He tried to make something happen, and he hustled down there, and he beats it out. Trammell did not charge the ball. Brown hustled it, and Brown breaks the ice. So Brown aboard, Alan Wiggins. I keep thinking I've seen this movie before, <laughs> maybe four other times. Castillo looking bunt, ball one. Each day, it seems, the Tigers score in the first inning. They knock out the San Diego starter, and then the Tigers stand around, and the Padres keep getting men on base and rallying and falling short. 1-0. and oh. Ground ball to the hole. There's Whitaker, and he will just go to first. Just about impossible to double up Wiggins. He hit into only two, and the toughest man in the majors. And one of the things that he did, it didn't get a good grip on that ball. We'll see it here. The ground ball, he almost loses it in the webbing. Right there, and he says, well, I'll just get the sure out. So one down, Brown at second base. Tony Gwynn trying to pick him up. Gwynn struck out on a bad ball with Wiggins stealing. And it's rare to see Tony go down on strikes. Breaking ball. He wouldn't chase it, ball one. Among the many things you can say about Whitaker, especially on the play like that last one, he does have soft hands. Soft hands. Huh? First time I heard that was about Terry Moore. Oh, yeah. One and oh. A shot down to short. Trammell will go to first in the dirt and dug out by Evans, taking third, Bobby Brown. So Steve Garvey will be coming up. Good backhand play. The short hop with that big mitt. I tell you, it just saw this side and he doesn't get it. Give you an idea how good Dave Bergman is because he goes in for defensive purposes. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see because Bergman does have that gold glove. Evans, of course, plays first and third. Here is Garvey, and he's a very hungry hitter. As we mentioned, he has failed to pick up an RBI now and a considerable number of at-bats. And he had a runner at third with one out in the first inning, and the out was recorded at the plate. And he slashes one of the hole, knocked down, and that's all, and the run is in. To give Garvey a couple of opportunities, you know he's going to pick somebody up. It's a base hit, an RBI, and it's Tigers three, Padres one. Even if Trammell comes up with it, his momentum would have carried him far too much to, towards third base for him to make a play at first. as a base hit all the way. You know, the Padres, counting the league championship series, are 0-4 on the road. And they have never been ahead on the road against either the Cubs or the Tigers. And with that run coming over, it's only the seventh run that they've scored on the road. Well, it's been a bad road show for them. That runs a big one in many ways. Cracks the ice, of course, but you only need one base runner for that tying run to get it to play. And you all go back to the hustle of Bobby Brown. He could have quit and said, oh, there I go again. And exactly. the shortstop throw him out. 0 and 1. 1 and 1. Nettles, of course, in this kind of a situation, he can get you even with one swing. Bobby sitting in the shadows there in the back without the hat. Gary Templeton in the forefront. That's Deacon Jones.
One and one. Ball two. Two and one. Tigers three runs, five hits. A bomb from Gibson with a man aboard. And Padres one run, four hits. Two and one. Three and one. Nettles likes the ball up, but he likes it up and in a little bit. And right about now, he becomes especially dangerous with Kennedy on deck because Nettles is a good triple shooter. Two and all, oh, three and one. He'll give you a good rip if it's his pitch. Garvey at first, Evans not holding. And he wouldn't bite. Bad ball. So now the tying runs are aboard. And Terry Kennedy coming up. And Roger Cray going out to the mound. While they visit, we have a chance to talk about Terry Kennedy. It's kind of one for the books. Terry Kennedy and his dad, Bob, also a big league ball player, there have been nine father and son combinations to play in the World Series. But only the Kennedys. Bob and Terry, the only father and son combination where each had at least one RBI in the World Series. Kennedy, of course, had a double to drive in two and a home run. Needless to say, Bob is here. Aurelio Lopez is up in the pen, though evidently Petrie is struggling as far as Sparky is concerned. He's been behind on nine of the 13 hitters he's faced. That's cause for concern. Kennedy grounded out in the second inning. He finds Nettles at first, Garvey at second, two out, and a run in. 3 1 Detroit. Fastball, and he hit it to Trammell, who goes to Whitaker. Kennedy hit an outside pitch, tried to pull it, and grounded it the other way. He wasn't going that way at all. One run, two hits, two left, and at the end of two and a half, Tigers three, Padres one. High life, time is everything. Beer drinkers come to us because we've been brewing an extra quality for the last 129 years. That's a lot of our time. But it's the reason you spend your time with us when you want the best beer you can find. Miller High Life. Welcome to Miller Time. We weren't planning to go to Midas on our honeymoon, but we didn't have much choice. The brakes on my old Camaro were making a terrible noise, so we pulled into Midas and showed them my guarantee. And now you're a Pat Fitzsimmons? I am. <laughs> Used to be. Midas fixed the brakes right away, and because of the guarantee, the brake shoes were free. I guess something always goes wrong on your wedding day. It's a good thing we could go to Midas. Trust the Midas. You may know who got the most hits, who stole the most bases, who caught or missed the most balls. But do you know which company's financial strength protects every single major league ball player? It is the equitable that helps them live the good life. Huh? Can you help me? With these Canon personal copiers? Oh, yeah, they're terrific. And you know, they copy in six colors. I know. Well, the entire copying process is in this cartridge. Look, so you can maintain it yourself. I know. This one even reduces and enlarges and makes copies up to legal size. I ought to know. I'm just. Oh, I know. Well, if you know all about Canon PC copies, what do you need me for? Mm -hmm. Over here. You should have known. For information, call toll free. That's the official family in the front row with the glasses. Ballard Smith, his wife Linda, and behind you see Carol McKean and Jack McKean, Trader Jack. That's the official San Diego family. Uh, Mrs. Croc, Joan Croc. I'm sure she's in the ballpark somewhere. No, you know, she's in New York, maybe. You know, Mrs. Croc, besides owning the ball club, is also a movie producer. Ball one. And if Joan Croc, the owner of the Padres, is producing a movie, what do you think it's about? Owner of the Padres. Religious thing? A priest. Uh -huh. It's called Mass Appeal, and Jack Lemon is going to play the priest. 
She didn't call me. You didn't get the call on her. Well, I'll be. Andy Hawkins got the call a lot earlier than he wanted. 2 0, oh, the count to Alan Trammell. Right. Not many people going to hit that pitch. Low outside, right on a corner. We have more breeze right now. I don't know if that's a harbinger of things to come. High fly ball into right center and looking up and calling is win, but so is Brown. Oh, they almost had an Alphonse and Gaston act out there. So in watching Herndon and now looking here, there's trouble out there. Brown is hollering, and now he's going to hear Gwynn. He says, I got it, I got it. Now he hears Gwynn, and Tony was checking to see how close he was, and he almost overran it. Brown said, you got it, you take it. One away. Balls like that, you don't want a whole lot of conversation. It's I got it and then zip it up. And yet, normally on every ball club, the center field is a captain out there. He takes anything he can get to, right? Right. He runs everybody else off. In fact, when Willie Mays was playing, he caught everything from the polo grounds at Kennedy Airport. That flag is 125 feet in the air, and there's a fairly good breeze blowing out the left field. 2 0 to Gibson, who powered one upstairs to right center. Gibson has four RBIs in the series. Fastball away, ball three. Andy Hawkins will watch his delivery. Here's a three and open. Ball four. The reason we were watching his delivery when he was an unsuccessful pitcher. Hawkins would go into his windup and then drop his right hand below his belt buckle. Watch this now. See where his hand goes. See it stay up above the belt. That's the big change apparently in his delivery. Well, little thing can make a big difference. Oh. I mean, who'd ever think of just the hand up above the belt, dropping your shoulder when you're driving it? Here's Paris, and now watch Gibson. He shortened his backswing, is what he did. You want to give me a little hip music? A little no, Hawaiian no, stuff? No, no, yeah. no, no, nothing like that. <laughs> All right. Gibson stole 29 during the regular year. So the two Michigan Staters, Garvey holding the bag, and watching his hips. He was doing a lot of shaking there, wasn't he? Well, he, he does a lot of things. He digs in with that left foot. He'll paw almost every time. He will he will build something, and he'll deke a little bit. You're going to have to watch him now. After your comments, he'll really do it now, no, I'm sure. No, there he goes, digging in. Watch the hip. Didn't have a chance, really. It's 3-1 to one Detroit in the third. This gives you something to watch when you go to the ballpark. Hey, I'm hip. <laughs> well, <laughs> one and one. Big banner in left field earlier today. It said, No jive. I'm alive. Boy, is ever Detroit. You know, the thing about that hip movement, though, Joe. Even if you saw it, how can you cash in on it? I mean, it's so slight. You can read the tip off through the lens easy. Two and one. But he doesn't do it. How can no. catch it? Can't do it. Well, all you do, you get alerted. I'll tell you right now, hip movement or not, Kennedy better be ready right here. Oh, yeah. Two balls, one strike. This is a, a perfect situation. Unless Kennedy wants to call a pitch out, which is doubtful. Look out. And the Hawk goes over there. Tigers three, Padres one, bottom of the third, one out. Two and one to Lance Parrish. Going. Leaning. Not going. High fly ball into shallow left field. Martinez is there. Two down. 
you got to like this Hawkins. I'll tell you that he's got a good live arm. He's a young fella, and when you, you talk to him, they all talk about it was a matter of confidence that he just lost it. That young, you can see where that could happen, but you can regain it in a hurry. And brother, if he doesn't have it now, he never will have it. But he's got it. You know, a footnote to Hawkins and Leverage. They retired 24 of the 26 hitters they faced back in game two. Can't get much better than that. Here's Herndon. Singled in that wild first inning when the Tigers got three. Ball one. One and oh. Herndon is from a great name town, Sunflower, Mississippi. <laughs> Two and oh. Isn't that something? But of course, if you put the wreckage of the starters up there, it's a totally different story. And the reason why the Padres are down three games to one, and why the Tigers are leading three to one right now. Two and zero to Larry Herndon. Now back. Two and one. We mentioned it in the aftermath of the first game. Larry Herndon is so quiet, so shy, so retiring. And when he hit the home run in the first game in San Diego, they tell me he left the park in uniform and he had his clothing delivered to the hotel. I mean, that's being retiring. And it's not that he's upset and doesn't want to talk to anybody, it's just his nature. You have to respect that. Oh, he's a good fella. First thing he said was, hey, that was Jack Morris' game. Two and one to Larry. And there goes Gibson. Ground ball to the hole, backhanded by Templin, and guns him out. Boy, what a pleasure to watch him throw the ball. And the count was two balls in one strike. Yeah. Manager's delight. A walk to Gibson, and they leave him. And at the end of three, Tigers three, Padres one. Recently, two American travelers dined at the Paris home of the famous chef, Anne Willem. The hostess, who founded Paris's Lager and Cooking School, served a special souffle that had won first prize in a prestigious competition. The guests were complimentary. The bon. And when asked where the award-winning souffle might be purchased, Anne, do you know where? The chef replied, "Why, I should think just about any way you like." Souffle Blanc from Ernest and Julio Gallo. All the best. You are about to enter the world of a new technology called X-ray microscopy. Developed by IBM research scientists to advance computer technology, it brought them close inside this computer chip, discovering details no one had ever seen before. The scientists then wondered what they would see if they examined blood cells the same way. What they saw fascinated medical researchers. They discovered structures within the living human cell never seen before. A number of medical researchers have already used this new technology to examine sickle cells and cancer cells. X-ray microscopy, an example of how IBM research can contribute not only to business, but to life itself. America's favorite pastime returns to NBC Sports as the nation's top bowlers aim at nearly one million in prize money. Jay Randolph and six-time Bowler of the Year and Bowler of the Decade Earl Anthony host the PBA Fall Tour. Premieres next Saturday on NBC. We have three innings in the books and the Tigers are leading three to one as evening slowly descends upon Detroit. And despite the fact we have a very gray sky and there are birds flying directly overhead, 
All the guys say the same thing. It's a uh, line that's as old as I can remember. When the birds fly overhead, those guys always say, those are the vultures, and they know my arm's dead. <laughs> Get away, birds. Get away from my arm. There they are. There they are. If we were in Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, I'd figure there was a storm out in the ocean and the birds would come in. There are a lot of them flying overhead, and we go to the fourth. Bavaku would have something to say about those birds. He'd have something to say about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Bavakwa, Martinez, and Templeton. Get the ball pretty hard, went out to left field in the second inning. Ball one. Dan Petrie trying to lead the Tigers to a championship. 1-0. You know, if the Tigers should win today, they would really become a home team to the pleasure of their fans. They clinch their division at home. They clinch the pennant at home. And here they are trying to clinch it in the World Series at home. Petrie falling behind. Sparky, I'm going to get that bullpen going in a hurry. I'll guarantee you and make a quick move because he'd like to nail it down, obviously. Lopez was up back of him in the third inning. And look at there, Craig on the phone. That's right. The only other team to do that, winning all the big ones at home, the 1969 New York Mets. And there is Aurelio Lopez, number 29, ready to go back to work. Three and one. All four, and he's going to have company as Lopez. Bill Shearer gets up to join him. Well, you can see Sparky's thinking every base runner. You got the tie and run at the plate, a home run, you tied up. So, Bavacqua standing at first. Sparky's really working that gum. I know it's gum and not chewing tobacco because at the start of the game, he blew the biggest bubble I've ever seen him. <laughs> He's really working on some. Carmelo Martinez singled in the second inning. He has two hits in the series. And he's back to opening up. Look at that left foot. And immediately Petrie takes advantage of it. Well, starting him out there, he's going to try to hit the outside corner. And if he catches him lean a little bit, he'll bust it in on his hands. They've just been flip flopping. If the two fastballs are inside, they go outside. They start outside, they go back inside. 0 oh and 1 to Carmelo. And a good breaking ball on the outside corner. Whoa. That's the second one. Now you can go either way. I mean, that's a hard slider, and they clocked it at 93. And you can really see that thing break from up here. You can tell the rotation of it. You can almost see that little World Series logo on that baseball. 0 oh and 2 to Martinez. Wouldn't bite after a good slider because that's the one you have a tendency to chase when you're down two strikes. Say the kids between the hard place and the rock, though, because the three pitches have been out there. He almost went for that one. He starts to lean a little bit. He just saw that bat right off in his hands. Evans behind Bavacqua. Nobody out. Out away. Another breaking ball. Only this one he came inside with. So that's four in a row. He missed with that one. He didn't want it where he got it. Four breaking balls in a row. And you can watch Parrish when he gives the sign. If he stays on that outside part of the plate, it's a breaking ball. And then if he comes inside, obviously it's a fastball. And remember, it was a bad slider that Bavacqua hit for the three run home run in the fifth inning back in San Diego. One and two. Three one Tigers, top of the fourth. Fastball. And got him on a foul tip. Stayed outside the whole time. So that's a little lesson. Dan Petrie going to the chalkboard. And for Martinez, he's going to the dugout with his eighth strikeout. He really worked on him, and he's got something on this one. High up. Looks good coming there. Tough pitch to handle high outside. Had a good cut. Didn't get it. Here now is Gary Templeton, notorious first ball hitter. Let's see what happens here. Ball one. Middle of that played out. He's, he's zoned in, I'll tell you. You gotta like Templeton. Traded from St. Louis to San Diego for the Wizard of Oz, Ozzie Smith. 
of awkward first Evans back on him. line into left center sinking and that's in there for a base hit since he's gone away he falls down that allows Templeton to get to second and stopping at third is Bavacqua. Herndon was going away from his play. He tried to twist his upper torso to get the ball back to the infield and he fell down while trying to do it. It's a double for Templeton. Good piece of hitting. Take a look at the replay. Herndon runs it down. He loses a little bit of footing right there. Whoops. And I'll tell you, they're not going to fool around with Petrie a whole lot of time here. Herndon did everything he could to get it back to that infield, but it was an easy two-base hit for Templeton. So now you have Bobby Brown on the spot again. It was Bobby's hustle for a base hit that gave the Padres a run in the third. He has a chance to tie it up with a base hit now. Off speed, fouled away. Pretty good pitch, especially to a fellow who is not hitting. You know how anxious Bobby must be up there. And Petrie takes advantage of it. And 0 for 5. Of course, he's left a lot of men on. Now he's trying to pick up the tying run. Bavacqua at third, Templeton at second. Fastball, and that's hit to left center. Lemon on the run, flags it. Tagging is Bavacqua to score, holding is Templeton. So Brown just hit in tough luck. He drilled that ball. Lemon closed the gap in a hurry. Sacrifice fly. It's a three to two ball game. Brown not trying to pull that ball, which was his intent before the game, just go with the pitch. He did. Looked like he was going to plug the gap. Lemon made a good play. Here you see Chet breaking over, plugging the gap. But it was not before. Bavak was able to score the second run. So now Alan Wiggins trying to pick up his buddy Gary Templeton and get the Padres even. It's three to two Detroit. We're in the fourth inning. Ball one. Wiggins single stole second to third on the overthrow but was cut down to the plate and last time up grounded out. Castillo with two out is even with the bag and not looking bunt now. Two and oh. Wiggins has been great in sending the ball back up the middle. That's been his spot. They had a look at Ozzie Virgil. Petrie continues to be behind on most of his hitters. A dangerous way to go, pitching uphill. Two balls, no strike. Fastball, hit into left center. Lemon was shallow. Here comes Templeton. Lemon's throw cut off by Evans. He goes to Trammell. It gets away, and it's finally retrieved by Lemon. Whitaker tried to glove it and couldn't, and the Padres have tied it up. And the Tigers have to be thinking as you see this ball going to left center field. Here comes Sparky. Lemon, a good throw. It's cut off as Evans wants to get uh, Wiggins going into second base, but they can't handle it. Tigers have to be thinking, Ben, about the Cub Padres series when the Padres were down. But remember, this ball club, they showed you they got a lot of dog. I mean, they're, they're tenacious, a lot of bulldog in them. Well, they were down 3 nothing to Rick Sutcliffe, and they were able to pull the rug out from under him. And they were down 3 nothing, and they have at least chased Dan Petrie and Bill Scherer, the left hand who will be coming in after we watch Gary Templeton bring home the tying run. The essence of hitting. George Brent. Some guys say it's the rhythm, reading the pitch. For me, it's a film that says I'm going downtown. The essence of shaving. This is Atra by Gillette. It pivots so the twin blades stay on your beard longer. But what Atra is all about is the feeling that says you just got Gillette's best shave. Gillette, the essence of shaving. No other heat gun removes paint faster than the Wagner Power Stripper. The Power Stripper is faster on latex, faster on oil. The Power Stripper gives you two temperature settings and a range of tips to give you versatility few heat guns can match. The new Wagner Power Stripper. It's the perfect tool for taking paint off from the people who know so much about putting it on. Wagner, the right tool for painting. So this is the new log cabin. 
Thanks for giving me a hand. Hey, what are friends for? You're two good friends. Tonight's kind of special. Try it this way. The beer we'll pour says something more somehow. Looks like we're about done, huh? Not yet, you're not. Tonight, tonight. Not a bad day's work. Next weekend, we put in the pool. When AT&T wrote the book on quality control, a lot of people read it. In fact, they studied it. Today, some of the most quality-conscious companies in the world use the AT&T handbook as a guide. The fact that so many companies depend on us for quality means a lot. The fact that so many people do means even more. AT&T, we're reaching out in new directions. Bill Shearer missing on his first pitch to Tony Gwynn. One ball and no strikes. Gwynn struck out and grounded out. Trying to give the Padres something they're really not familiar with. A lead. It's 3-3. Off speed and a high fly ball. Gibson going back to the track and he's got it. So the Padres scramble for two in the fourth and get even. And remember, they also had a man thrown out at the plate. And at the end of three and a half, Padres three, Tigers three. To all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, What more could we ask of you? To be any more eager to help? Readier to show some affection? Or prove your devotion? Who better deserves to be honored on stamps? If you've never collected stamps before, now you can start with something you love, the new dog stamps. Did you clean? Now at the post office. for you. Excuse me. I'd just like to check out your small size Ford Ranger. That's an advanced engine. With new electronic four-cylinder fuel injection. But, but... I see Ranger's roomy. Widest cab of any small truck. But who are you? Big payload, too. Wow, 1,765 pounds. But who are you? What do they call you? Melvin Penstemacher, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh -huh. America's truck, built for tough. A new idea. Like a pebble in a pond can change the world around it. Technology from a company called TRW puts ideas to work. And when an idea gets going, there's no end to where it can lead. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. We're going to the bottom of the fourth inning. Sparky just hollering, come on, Chester, let's go. It'll be Lemon, and we'll see about Garbay because Johnny Grubb is on deck. Dick Williams, meanwhile, has entrusted the tie to Andy Hawkins. So Lemon, Grubb, and Evans figure to be coming up against Hawkins. Fastball inside and a shock disbelief. There's Johnny Grubb. Lemon singled in the first inning, picked up an RBI. He has four hits in the series. On one. Line drive at Nettles. Oh, it was there smoke on that? That was self-defense. He had to catch that. That was right at him. You talk about hitting it right on the nose. And Nettles, he just kind of looked at it after he caught it and said, hey, don't be coming down there so fast. Here's that had to shot. hurt, don't you yeah. think? It looked like it was a heavy ball. Watch it sink right there. Mm. Caught in the webbing. Like it was made of steel. And Johnny Grubb, a former Padre, coming up. He's a number one Tiger pinch hitter. He had 381 during the regular year, including three home runs coming off the bench. Of course, the Padres know all about him.
One out, fourth inning, 3-3. Three, three. Good fastball. Oh, that really was rising, too. He's got a good live arm, and that's why they say don't nibble, just go right at him. Your stuff is good enough. You don't have to nibble. That got him. Yep, hit by the pitch. Oh, and two tried to come inside and came too far inside. That was a slider. You could see it starting to bite his way in there and grab a grub. Hanging in there gets hit on the left elbow. The grub goes to first the hard way hit by the pitch and Darrell Evans will be coming up with one out a runner aboard Evans you remember sky to fly ball deep to right the Tony Gwynn caught in the second inning three three bottom of the fourth the Padres trying to stay alive. fly ball it's playable and Tony Gwynn actually coming up for it Evans holding. A, I was going to say uh, Ben Evans has a great swing for this ballpark and he's really going for the long one had a good swing but got under it and he's just disgusted he knows that he got under it and it's playable that must be awful to get the pitch you know you can drive it just miss it and get under it there's Marty Castillo. He struck out in the second inning. Borderline pitch, remember, three and two. He was caught looking. Does he look a little bit like Darrell Evans? He yes. does to me. I, I agree with you on that one. I noticed you said on that one with emphasis. Well, Billy Consolo to me does not look like Hoyt Wilhelm. <laughs> well, now the secret's out. <laughs> we have no secrets. No. Oh, and one. The Marty Castillo two down Yanni Grubb at first Castillo with the big two run home run Friday night. Oh after the fastball and the slider he comes up with a change like that you talk about dirty pool. That's the pitch he's working on that's the pitch that you'll see him throw a lot of beginning in spring training. He gets a Yuma he'll be throwing that a lot. There's the slow you see how he had the grip. Is the three like a three finger grip, almost like a palm ball. Oh, and two. And that's it in the right field. Base hit. Grub is to second. They'll hold him. The throw to Templeton. I was talking to Jack McKeon before the game, the general manager, about Tony Gwynn, and we were talking about outfield play. He said he has made and is making himself a better outfielder. For one thing, he'll charge anything in sight and get that ball back in a hurry, and that's exactly what he did there. Youngster is a good hitter, pretty obvious by the way he led the league, but he still hits, takes extra batting practice before every game. He said, I just have to get loose. Well, here's Lou Whitaker, singled in the first inning, and fly to center in the second. He comes up with runners at first and second, Castillo at first, Grubb hit by the pitches at second. Whitaker hitting 294 in the series. Change. 1 and 0. Brand new daughter Sarah and Norm Sherry going out to the mound to talk to Hawkins. Usually when that happens uh, and uh, really not that much going on and the pitching coach jumps off the bench because the manager was groaning and they've got some action in the bullpen. Leopards, Leopards is starting to throw. But they're going to wonder why are you throwing changes. Well what's in your mind. I just want to know because that, that's a groaner's pitch. They are quick. He's warming up. I don't think he's trying to get ready to catch Whitaker but he is certainly getting ready for Gibson. A change of pace may have been a message to the bench that something was up. Uh -huh. There's a scorecard Williams of course thinking OK I got Whitaker here. But then I have the right hand inning Trammell coming up, so I'll stay with Hawkins. And then if I'm still in trouble and they have Gibson, I can counter with Leopard. Maybe. One ball and no strike. Ball two. One thing you know, 
Williams cannot afford to play any kind of a waiting game. Not today. He'd be left at the station. Two on. Castillo at first. Grubb at second. Two out. Three three in the fourth. And Hawkins now is in a lot of trouble. There's Alan Trammell. Boy, you talk about the horns of a dilemma. 3-0 to Whitaker and Trammell waiting in the wings. Ball four, and the bases are loaded. talk about the bullfighter and the moment of truth where he stands there with cape and sword looking over the horns of a bull. It is the moment of truth for Andy Hawkins as Trammell comes up with the bases loaded two out three three in the four. High fly ball it's playable Bobby Brown is there and the Padres get out of the cave. And Andy Hawkins looked right down the throat of the Tiger and got away with it. And at the end of four, three, three. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Tonight, the epic of V continues with the final battle. And then the countdown begins for the thrilling premiere of V, the series. Introducing more truck for 85, the 5999 Nissan. More payload than any other leading standard compact truck. More combined standard power and torque, too, all for the same sticker as last year. The 5999 Nissan. Power's off. Let's go. The more truck for no more money. Come alive, come and drive. Major motion from Nissan. At your Datsun dealer. MaxiCare thinks it's time to cut the aggravation out of group health insurance. So we cut out claim forms, and we cut out annual deductibles. MaxiCare cuts the cost of preventive care, too. Routine exams and well child care are just $2. And if you do get sick, MaxiCare pays 100% of hospitalization. MaxiCare provides maximum medical care, not paperwork. Ask your employer about MaxiCare, the new generation in health care. New York, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love your home cooking, honey. I just love your silent pictures. I love the way you move. In United's friendly skies, every nonstop to New York is a comfortable wide-body flight. What a great way to Broadway. I love New York. You know why? Of course, it's open all night. Call United or your travel agent. We love New York. $100,000 final, 6.30 tonight on Name That Tune. Today's game is brought to you by Gillette Foamy Gel with more lubricant for the closeness and comfort you want in a shave. And by Epson Personal Computers. State-of-the-art simplicity. We're going to the fifth inning in a tied-up ball game. And Bill Shearer working on Steve Garvey, Greg Nettles, and Terry Kennedy. You know, just thinking of one of the most remarkable set of coincidences, I think, in baseball history, as Garvey hits a towering fly ball, but it's a runway out there for Lemon. One away. We're in the fifth inning of game five. Now, how about this for an oddity? Go back to 1952. Carl Erskine is celebrating his fifth wedding anniversary. He's going to pitch the game. In the fifth inning, the Yankees score five runs on five hits. Dodgers win the game 6-5. Erskine goes all the way. Time of the game, three hours. It started at 2.05. So it ended at 5 after 5. So you can always remember Erskine's anniversary. Yes, you can. Then he went to the racetrack and batted number five. And went right down the tube. Finished fifth. <laughs> one and one. One out in the fifth. Three, three tie. Each side with a half a dozen hits. Two.
two and one to Greg Nettle. Grounded out and walked. Bill Shear. His first two years in the Reds organization was Sparky's last two years in it. There's a drive to center, sinking base hit. The one out single by Nettles. And that'll bring up Terry Kennedy. There's Bill's number. The Tigers acquired him from the Reds after the start of the year. Back in 83 as a rookie, he saved 10 games for Cincinnati, and Roger Craig is going to pay him a visit. Way Roger's walking out there, it's like he's going to buy a little bit of time before uh, Lopez comes in, who's just kind of throwing some loosening up pitches. He's been throwing down in the bullpen, and then when Sparky made the change, he sat down, and it's not going to take him much to get loose. That's the third time Lopez has been up in five innings. So he's probably close to being ready. After the left hand hitting Kennedy, Lopez looking ahead would figure to get a call. Bavacqua, Martinez, right hand batter. Templeton switches, as you know. There's Kennedy grounded out and hit into a force play. 3 3. Nettles, who does not run well at first, with a left hand hitter up. Evans not holding the bag. Slow curve, fouled away. If you watched the special feature yesterday about relief pitchers, they were talking about funky modern day slang of people like Quisenberry. When Russ Nixon had Bill Shearer at Cincinnati, he said Shearer has a funky breaking ball. I don't know what the definition is. 0 and 1. Well, that might be it. Kennedy just agreed. Here with the super duper slow mo, you might see a funky pitch. Wherever you are, Russ Nixon, this one's for you. 0 oh and 2. And another one tapped slowly to Sherry. He's got a play at first. Trammell set the glove up, saying, Come to me. And Shira either forgot about it or just was afraid to go back there. Now he just made up his mind he was going to go to first base. There's nothing you can do at shortstop. He's probably saying to Nettles, can you imagine that? I have my glove up and didn't throw it to Here him. Here comes Sparky. Here comes Sparky, and it's going to be a pitching change. He even said to himself, hey, if you're not going to go back to second base, you're gone. Now he's got time here because Kennedy's not that good a runner. He's got plenty of time, and there's Trammell's glove. He's saying, give it to me. He had a play, but he decided to go to first base. From Newport News to Newport Beach, from the Australian Outback to Abilene, more men face the day with Gillette Good News than any other disposable razor. Because Gillette Twin Blades shave better than one. And for men all over the world, the name Gillette stands for shaving. And Good News stands alone as the world's number one disposable razor. Now more good news for a better shave. Good News Pivot, only from Gillette. When my dad ran this business, he never came home until after we were in bed. Inventory one night, payroll the next. So I got an Epson personal computer to help me run things. Only Epson has this keyboard with keys in English, not computerese. One button gives me my schedule, draws a graph. In fact, the Epson runs more programs than an IBM PC. My Epson does a lot of things, and it does them easily. But what it does best is let me go home. <laughs>
Well, now there's a tiger you can hold. <laughs> Talking about holding, that's his responsibility. Aurelio Lopez trying to hold the Padres with a runner at second and a 3-3 tie. Lopez picked up for Petri in game two. He went two-thirds of an inning in that game, did not give up a run. However, he gave up a base hit and a walk, and he got away with it. He's a power pitcher, throws hard. He was a pitcher who made that uh, one pitch on the pitch out that got Larry Barnett with Templeton swinging. And if you look at Roger Craig. So Kurt Bavakwa is the batter, glide to left and walk. Lopez had a 10 game winning streak, the longest in the American League this year. Ball one. Nettles at second, two out, three three, top of the fifth. Ball two. shake on his delivery it's all part of his rhythm his left leg really does little number two and one to Bavacqua Nettles at second two out out the way two and two it'll take a pretty good face hit to score Nettles from second base he will be off with the crack at the bat because of two outs but we could see a play at the plate because they're not that deep for Bavacqua Fly to left in the second inning, hit the ball hard, and walked in the fourth, came around and scored a run. Two and two. Half swing, got him. To Lopez, right side for Bacqua. Nettles, left at second base. And at the end of four and a half, it's still 3-3. Some people think the IBM PC Junior runs only about this much software. The truth is, PC Junior runs over a thousand of the best, most up-to-date programs, including powerful new cartridge programs like Lotus 123. And with PC Junior's new memory expansion attachment, it can run well over a thousand more programs. PC Junior from IBM, the computer that's growing by leaps and bounds. I can't tell you everything Ford has done lately, but just for openers, let me tell you about the doors. Ford's aircraft-style doors blend smoothly into the roofline. They also have concealed rain gutters. This contributes to better aerodynamics, which reduces wind noise and saves you fuel. Better doors are just one more area where Ford is closing in on perfection. You're gonna love the quality. Ford, quality is just one. Uh -huh. How old will Danny Boy get? Oh, he's going to be with us a long, long time, son. Ralston Purina has researched nutrition, searching for ways to help dogs live longer lives. And we've succeeded with Purina Dog Chow. Every yeah, nutritional Boy, discovery that can help dogs live longer goes into Purina Dog Chow. Danny Boy, you're terrific. Purina Dog Chow brand dog food, helping dogs live longer lives. They are the prodigies of racing's true champions. The sons and daughters of Northern Dancer, of Seattle Slough, of Alidar. This fall, the bloodline will be tested and new champions will be born. The Breeders' Cup, November 10th on NBC. Boy, what an afternoon at the races. Mark that one down, November the 10th. And we've got ourselves quite a race now. 3-3, bottom of the fifth. And the big cats coming up. Gibson and Parrish and Herndon. Gibson hit a two-run home run in the first inning and walked in the third. And is Gibson a talented ball player? He's had a great year. He can do it all with the home run. He even tries to beat out a lot of bunts from Alan Mickey Mantle. So Nettles plays about even with the bag at third. The right side, however, deep. Ball one. 
Andy Hawkins, you remember, got Trammell with the bases loaded. But what you have to look for now is whether he expended all of his gasoline. That needle could be on empty in a hurry after that last inning. Fouled away, one and one. Sparky trying to win it in both leagues. And Dick Williams trying to stay alive to do it. In a game like this, when I see those managers, I think of that old baseball line. They get paid half for winning, half for worrying, and nothing for losing. Yeah, isn't that the truth? In fact, when you think about it, there are only two people who are really involved with winning and losing. The pitcher, because he lives by wins and losses, and the manager. manager. Nobody else, really. One ball, two strikes. Fastball off the glove of Nettles. Deflected into shallow left. Run down by Templeton and holding is Gibson with a base hit. Well, at great speed, pulled Nettles in. And he hit it hard that way. You doubt if Nettles could have come up with it playing back. He got a glove on it, but he was in tight. And there's no doubt about it being a base hit. And they respect the speed. Watch how quickly he gets that ball in, Templeton. And of course it's a sign that Gibson is really developing as a hitter the fact that he went the other way after pulling a home run to right center. Hey, they did a job on him as far as attitude he's had the ability and he is really a determined young man and he's working on all the facets of baseball. He keeps the way he's going. He's going to be a tremendous star. But here's Parrish and in the bullpen Craig Lefferts is throwing again. And remember that tough inning that Hawkins had in the fourth. How many times we've seen a pitcher fight his way through an inning and have nothing left the following inning. Three runs, seven hits for each side. Lefferts in the pen. Gibson held on by Garvey. Fouled right into Kennedy's mask. Lance with his 33 home runs during the regular year, hitting 267 in the series. On one. on the grass on the track makes the catch Gibson tags going to second he's in there once again Gibson's speed pays off he was right on top of that bag when he began to slide but the scouting report has been that you can run on the outfielders I wouldn't be surprised to see him appeal to play once they get set and get it going thinking that Gibson left early at least it'd be worth an ask no one hollering from the dugout and that's a usual sign the Padres are very quiet though evidently they're not going to appeal the whole club would be up if they thought Gibson did leave early I did it on general principles yeah Larry Herndon single to center grounded to short good backhand save on that one by Kennedy both catchers have made some marvelous stops behind the plate never get credit never get a mention never even get a ripple of applause want to know why in the world does anybody want to be a catcher because he started out on the playground as a fat kid there's no other place to play you it's like why does anybody play the tuba or the bass fiddle <laughs> thank goodness they do so Gibson at second, one out in the fifth, a 3-3 tie. And low fastballs, and he's behind 3-0. and oh. On deck is Chet Lemon. So Gibson slashed one of Nettle's gloves, and Parrish sent Martinez to the track. And the count 3-0 and oh to Herndon. So with Gibson at second, you definitely have the feeling that Hawkins is laboring a bit. And he walked in. And 
Now here comes Dick Williams, and I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if Hawkins' needle is on empty and he's gone. We'll see. Oh, he's got to make the change because that's not Hawkins that has been out here in the other games. He is kind of struggling. He's kind of aiming the ball, and Williams has to go right now. He can't second guess himself. Leffert will be in this game. I can't tell you how many times you sit upstairs and you see a pitcher get out of a really tough jam. And all you have to do is wait. And a lot of times he has spent it all, and Hawkins has spent everything with 58 pitches. He's gone. Now there's a guy in a hurry. The other fella kind of like to hang around. In my baseball career, I was treated nine times. But wherever I went, one thing was always the same. Everyone drank light beer from Miller. In Boston, they said the best thing about light was it's got a third less calories than the regular beer. In L.A., they said the best thing was lights less filling. But I think the best thing is it tastes great right here in New York City. Ken. This isn't New York. Chicago. No. Milwaukee. <laughs> Kansas City. Like beer from Miller. Omaha. Everything you always wanted in a Spokane. beer and less. Utica. I like to save the big surprise for last and turn. <laughs> NCR is making a personal computer. Uh huh. Sharp graphics. Surprise. Uh huh. I'll take it. Oh, can't you look surprised? I said I'll take it. I know you'll take it. I just wanted you to be surprised. But I know NCR. They practically computerized the banking business. Look, I'm writing a check. Oh, money isn't everything. Nobody's ever surprised. Well, maybe if you didn't tell people who made it. <laughs> a better computer. It's exactly what you'd expect from NCR. <laughs> Right Guard Stick will help protect you from odor for up to 24 hours. Do work hard to the Right Guard. Gillette Foamy Gel. The gel that gives you more. More lubricants. Better beard setup. More lubricants. For closeness and comfort, get Gillette Foamy Gel. The gel that gives you more. Drive over now to Firestone Tire and Service Center. Firestone. Our blimp sailing serenely overhead. Inside Tiger Stadium, things on the wild side. In direct contrast. You have Kirk Gibson at second base. One out. You have Larry Herndon at first base. And you have Chet Lemon coming up. Greg Leverich is now in his third game. He was in Whitson's game. He went three innings, allowed just one hit and struck out five. And he was also in Chow's game and worked two hitless innings. You'll see a pretty good screwball that he's come up with, and he can change speeds with it, so it gives him really two extra pitches. Leverich born in Munich, West Germany. Screwball. One and oh. One away in the fifth inning, 3-3. Three, three. You like to see a guy run in. He really overdoes it the way he comes in, but it makes your ball club look good, like, hey, don't worry about it. I'm here, man. I'll get him. Some guys, they figure, uh-oh, why, why me? <laughs> One ball, no strike. Scrooge away, ball two. You wonder sometimes, in a fresher spot, how many ball players would say, don't hit it to me? There are enough. Mm -hmm. One is too many on a ball club, but there are enough. Two balls and no strikes to Jet Lemon. And now he's in trouble. Three and all. He might not be so happy he ran in. He's going to regroup now. He, he's, he knows he's in a jackpot. Lemon took a good look at Grammas, but you tend to doubt that he turned him loose three and all. Lemon 3-0 and, oh and a left-hand hitter on deck. Remember, Johnny Grubb batted for Garvey. Gibson at second, Herndon at first, one out. Strike. Up around the armpits in the high portion of the zone. Here comes a very, very 
difficult pitch that he's going to have to make. Here's the three nothing pitch. It's three and one. He's got to throw something besides the fastball, and he's got to get it over for a strike. And he walked in. The bases are loaded with one out. So the Tigers had the bases loaded with two out in the fourth. Now the base is loaded and one out in the fifth. Rusty Kuntz coming up and Dick Williams twisting and turning again as he chews on his sunflower seeds. Sparky's been doing a little chewing and a little spitting himself. The Rusty Kuntz that played at Cal State. There are 19 Cal State campuses. He played at Cal State Stanislaus. Very popular ball player here because he's come through with some big hits and he's also the good humor man. He's always happy, gives you enough of that uh, down home kind of talk to really become popular. Look at his numbers. No wonder he's popular. They got him from the Minnesota Twins last December. He originally broke in with the White Sox. Standing room only on the base pads. Gibson at third. Herndon at second. Lemon at first. Garvey and Nettles are up. Templeton and Wiggins are back in double play depth. And the crowd beside itself. One out. Boy, you talk about having a tiger by the tail. Look out here. High pop fly. Out goes Wiggins. Makes the catch and coming to the plate and scoring is Gibson. I can't believe that Wiggins caught that ball. I don't know why Quinn didn't run him off the play. Quinn is coming into the play. He had an easy play if he comes in and catches it, unless he lost the ball. Uh, I don't think he lost it. Uh, Wiggins went out as all good and feeling should and did run off the play. And Quinn did not run him off the play. Boy, what a surprise. And Williams has to be surprised. Where was his right fielder? Well, now Wiggins goes out. He's got to go on until he gets run off the play. And he's not run off the play. He was running away, had to turn around, and Gibson didn't even hesitate. Of course, that shot doesn't show you where in the world was Tony Gwynn. He had an easy play. Wiggins was going away from home. Gwynn was coming into the play. Well, he's right next to him. He could have made the play. Now, Leffers backs up the play. Now, watch Gwynn. There you see how close they are. You know what? He lost it. I'll tell you why he did. When the ball was halfway to right field, he stuck his hands out. It was as if I don't know where it is. I really feel that Tony Gwynn lost the ball after I saw his gesture. The only excuse for letting the second baseman take that play. So it is four to three Detroit. Foul back by Darrell. Take another look. Watch his arm. Well, I think that's after the fact. Yeah, it is. It's before that that Gwynn put his hands out. You have it, but you have to see the very beginning. Big play. Meanwhile, Herndon at second and Lemon at first. Ball one, one and two. Don't overlook Gibson's speed on all this. Remember, Gibson. He went to second on a fly ball to left field, went to third on the walk in a pop fly. His speed paid off. Oh, sure. And it's going to especially pay off on a second baseman throwing from right field. Strike three called, and what a big play that pop fly becomes. The Tigers should not have scored, but they did. And at the end of five, Detroit four and the Padres three. The essence of hitting. 
George Brent. Some guys say it's the rhythm, reading the pitch. For me, it's a film that says I'm going downtown. The essence of shaving. This is Atra by Gillette. It pivots so the twin blades stay on your beard longer. But what Atra is all about is the feeling that says you just got Gillette's best shave. Gillette, the essence of shaving. The leading message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Friday on Miami Vice. It's a hit this song. And you're on it. Friday. They were the perfect family. A loving husband, beautiful wife, laughing, happy kids. Until one terrible night. Fatal Vision, November 18th. I know it's tough to see, but look at the picture of Gwen. See his right hand. Well, not only did the right hand go out, one frame later, so did the left hand go. Both hands went out almost in supplication, as if to say, help me. And I really think that's the turning point, maybe of the whole year. It's 4-3 to three Detroit. Carmelo Martinez, Gary Templeton, and Bobby Brown do up. Fouled away, 0-2. It certainly is a play that I think a hundred times this year he's made. Oh, sure. Because you just run the infielder off to play. It didn't happen. And there has to be a reason. And I'm sure Gibson was tagging thinking if, if he takes it, I got a hold. Second baseman catches it. He's gone. 0-2 oh, to Carmelo Martinez. He singled and struck out in the dirt. Oh, that might have hurt Paris. Let me tell you, he blocked that, but I think he took it. There is Gwynn. The Parrish down on one knee. <laughs> it did sting a mm. bit the way he threw that ball back <laughs> to the pitcher. That's the way you tell him, come on, give me a 60-footer, not a 55-foot curveball. The worst one, it bounced and came straight up the elevator shaft. One and two. Line foul into the seats in the left field corner. Still one and two. And Martinez checking his bat finds there's a crack in it. Fifty one thousand nine hundred and one the paid attendant. So Martinez with a new stick one and two the count. Four three Tigers, top of the six. Breaking ball got him looking, and that kid is at some series. He has struck out nine times. Friends, this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Now, if you're going to let an infielder go out and run an outfielder off the ball, this might be a guy who could get away with it because Templeton has a great arm. Grounded out and doubled, one for two. But it's always the momentum that's a factor, and too, how? because they're running away from the play. Yep. Boy, what a big play that is. On a pop fly and a shallow right. One and one. Slice foul. One and two. Did he break his bat? Oh, this uh, Lopez will do that to you. He, he can jam you inside with that hard slider. It's a biting slider. And he doesn't break it in half, but he puts enough of a dent in it. You've got to get a new one. It's right, right in on, on the thumbs, huh? Oh, yeah, right at the belt buckle is the shot. You'll see it. Digging in, you see it coming across? That's a biting slider. Great for the bat business. Oh. One reason the kids have gone to, uh, what, aluminum? Aluminum bats, cheaper. Now back. Back. 
slider is really it's it's just changed a lot of hitting styles changed a lot of careers and of course so many ball players like all the weight in the meat end and a very thin handle boy they'll string your violin all night with it that's it in the alley in left center field Herndon It's on his left side. He can stretch and he makes the play. If he's a left hand thrower, it might have been trouble. But he really galloped over there and closed that gap in a hurry. Here's a good look at it. Watch him stretch out to get it. And you see his shoes going deep in the grass. It's a very slow outfield here. In fact, Templeton doubled in the fourth inning on the ball in a lot of ballparks, would have gone to the wall. Right. And the momentum has swung back towards Detroit. See Herndon? Very slow outfield. Oh, and two to Bobby Brown. He has really clipped that outside corner. He is, he's just huffing and puffing like the 515. Now he's really rolling. And now you try to protect the outside corner, and that's when he jams you on the hands with the slider. Broken back. Right down the middle. Oh, did he set him up? He was looking for a pitch inside, and Lopez read him. Randy Jones in downtown San Diego for light beer from Miller. And I'm telling you, these Padre fans are really fired up. Hey, anything you fans want to tell those folks down in Detroit? Let's take it straight! Let's take it straight! Let's take it down to Norm Cash in Detroit. Hey, Randy, see these Tiger fans? They might have something to say about that. This is a Mustang LX that comes with reclining bucket seats. That comes with AM FM stereo with premium sound. Comes with power steering, power brakes, power door locks. Comes with interval wipers, speed control, and styled road wheels. And it goes for less than $6,900. Mustang LX. Have you driven the best built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? Father Lawrence Rainville studied for a master's in computer science at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in a computer center that was once a church. At Rensselaer, most of the computer terminals are ITT courier terminals. They're used for everything from admissions to research. At ITT, we're helping people use high technology to do their job. Beautiful. No matter whose work they're doing. Tonight, the epic of V continues with the final battle. And then the countdown begins for the thrilling premiere of V, the series. Well, when you think about it, Joe, you have a converted outfielder in his first year at second base and a basketball player in right field, and they're involved in the biggest play of the series. And it's a big play because it really lets the air out of the balloon because it's a tie-breaking run. And the inning that they had to come back and answer that run by Detroit, they went down one, two, three with two strikeouts. So Padres really have an uphill battle. They do have a lot of comeback in them, though, as they've proven in the series. So it ought to be a good finish. They're going to have to reach back and get it. Right now, Marty Castillo will start it off. Ball one. Castillo followed by Whitaker and Trammell. Marty struck out, called out, and singled in the fourth inning. One and one. Bottom of the sixth inning. Screwball. Oh, beauty. One and two. Of course, if he could ever call pitches, this is the place, this ballpark. <laughs> We're, we're peeking right over Kennedy's shoulder. Another screwball, and he pulled it. In the hole, backhanded by Templin. Makes the throw too late. Incredible play. Incredible play. I can't believe he was even going to throw that ball, and he made it very close. This is why I said if you're going to have an infield to throw from the outfield, here's a guy you wouldn't mind doing it. Look where he is. 
and he ends up way over third base, and he throws that ball while he's running, and if he doesn't stretch out, Castillo is out. Look at this, coming right down the line. Watch him stretch, extra stretch. There it is. It gets by Nettles, and Templeton throws on the run. Look at here, and is accurate with it. It's a short hop. But it's amazing that he even made the throw. I don't know if many shortstops that would have even made the throw. He's incredible. I've seen him so many times in two different uniforms make throws that boggle the mind. But with all of it, Marty Castillo beats it out. And Templeton, of course, has been playing on bad knees. There is Whitaker, single flyed out and walked. They're looking bunt, nettles on the grass. Of course, after Whitaker comes Trammell. Scott report on Garvey is he rarely makes the play at second. There'll be action in the Padre bullpen in a moment. Big chopper to Garvey. He tags the bag, throws to second, and the tag is there. Double play. Because once Garvey stepped on the bag, the force was removed. Templeton had to tag Castillo, and he did. It was right on the bag. Garvey only has to take a step. It's high. Look at here. And he's throwing. Templeton comes down with it, and Doug Harvey. There's Castillo hustling down. I wonder if he slid off the bag. He had him. Good look. Boy, and a great throw. Garvey has made three out of four excellent throws to second base. And he doesn't normally do that. No. He's really come up with some dandy. Only once did he throw high where Templeton had a leap in the air. The other three right on the money. Here's Trammell. 2 0. Oh. Down in the Padre bullpen. Who do you think would be throwing this time in the game? You got it. Strike. You can bet if somebody hits a loud foul on the Padre lineup that Hernandez will be up. You know what's interesting about Gossage? You probably won't believe this unless you really check the record books close. Two and one. In there. In the last eight World Series games in which Goose Gossage was eligible to pitch, he has never pitched with a lead. Now that's a shocker, huh? Two and two. On deck, Kirk Gibson. Four three Tigers. Trammell saying hold it. You mentioned Kirk Gibson, the thought just runs through my mind. That's when you talk about speed. It isn't measured just with stolen bases, because he stole that run and didn't steal a base. Line drive off the glove of Nettles. He should have caught it. The throw to Garvey. Got him anyway. Another great throw by Gary Templeton. Nettles has it, and it spins away. And there's Johnny on the spot. Barehanded. And he gets something on it. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Tonight, the epic of V continues with the final battle. And then the countdown begins for the thrilling premiere of V, the series. Ranger STX. A new sport truck from Ford. Fully equipped and packed with as much driving excitement as Ford could put into a truck. Packed with power, too. V6 power that Nissan and Toyota SR5 don't even offer. Power to get you where you want to go. Ranger STX. A new sport truck built with Ford quality. Come see why Ford is number one in the West. It's surprising what can happen when you build personal relationships by telephone. The more I keep in touch, the more things happen. Paige Rents is editor-in-chief of Architectural Digest. One of my friends, Val Arnold, is an interior designer. We've stayed in touch over the years. One day while we were talking, Val said he was redecorating Dinah Shore's home. He told me all about it. Then he said, Paige, would you do a feature on Dinah's home? Just like that, a personal call became a professional one. A similar thing happened with Jeffrey Bean, the fashion designer. 
We were talking on the phone when out of the blue he said I could photograph his apartment. At that point, we had never met face to face. I don't think anything can take the place of these personal contacts. In fact, I built the magazine by building personal relationships by telephone. Pacific Bell would like to thank Paige Rents for illustrating this simple fact. The most successful business calls are personal. Sports highlights with Andy Lascano tonight at 6 on News 4 LA. Here's that last play. You call it. You see the ball. You see his foot. Safe. But Got the history books will say out. And that's Mike Riley called him out, and that's all it counts. 5-6-3 on that play. Now we go to the seventh inning. Lopez has struck out three of the four batters he has faced, and 14 of his 18 pitches have been strikes. And Wiggins has to get on some way, somehow. Castillo's in close to third, but he's been able to drag that ball past the pitcher, and let's see. He hasn't tried to bunt. Now he takes a strike. Lopez, not that good a fielder, the big guy, and if Sparky's instructions hold true, he'll break towards first base because Castillo's taken away the bunt from third. Oh, and one. In there. All Lopez does is throw strikes. Like a machine. Boy. Oh, and two to Alan Wiggins. Strikeouts, three of them call strikes. There it is. I mean, that pitch, 93 miles an hour, and certainly too close to take in the, in the game that you're fighting for your life for. And here is Tony Gwynn. Fly ball to left field. It's playable, and Herndon is there. And all of the momentum has swung to Detroit ever since the little pop fly to right field that allowed the go-ahead run to score. And Steve Garvey coming up. Well, there's nothing that'll take the momentum away quicker than the guy coming in and getting called strike threes. Yeah, the Padres are going to sag. Now's the time with Hernandez in the pen and Lopez on strikes. Garvey aboard on a fielder's choice. Remember, that's a big play. It's a one-run game. Wiggins was at third with one out. If Garvey hits a fly ball to get him home, it's another game. But Garvey hit a ground ball, and Whitaker threw Wiggins out at the plate. Garvey had an infield single and flied out since, and there is yet another strike. Will you? 0 and 1. A reminder to our stations along the network at the end of the eighth inning. We'll have an extra station identification at the end of the eight. 20 out of 23 strikes. Ground ball to third. Marty Castillo throws him out. Seven in a row retired by Lopez. Eight in a row retired by the Tigers. And it is 4-3 Detroit as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Ever noticed how much Ford LTD owners like their cars? A survey shows no other American-built car in its class has more completely satisfied owners than Ford LTD. So if you want satisfaction, ask the people who bought LTDs. Or ask the man in California who has over 700. He's easy to find. Just look for his driveway. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? These are Texas Steer Boots from Kmart. One of the best-selling leather boots in America. Good-fitting boots that have it all. Lasting full-grain leather uppers insulated to well below zero. Tempered steel shank for extra support. Padded collar for comfort. Oil-resistant outer sole. And Goodyear welt construction. Now on sale for just $25. Texas Steer. Branded with value. Only at Kmart. Kmart, we've got it you know, one of the best things about being an ex-big leaguer is getting freebies to the game. Call the front office, bingo. And once these fans recognize me, I probably won't even have to pay for my life here for Miller. Down and 
I love them. These fans know I drink light because it's less filling and it tastes great. Good seats, huh? You're in the wrong shape, buddy. Come on. Oh, I must be in the front come on, row. Come on, come on, come on. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Good seats, hey, buddy. He missed the tag. He missed the tag. From the World Series to the presidential debates, NBC News is there. When you want news from across the nation and throughout the world, turn to NBC Nightly News. Well, here it is, the biggest single play in the 1984 World Series. Bases loaded and one out. A fly ball to shallow right, normally caught by the right fielder because he's coming into the play. Instead, Wiggins goes out. It's our contention that Gwynn had lost the ball. That allowed Wiggins the chance. And the big play, Gibson comes home to break the tie. It's the kind of a play that the outfield takes charge for, for some reason, Ben. And we'll have to wait and see what he says. Did he lose it? Did he not call it? Well, we go to the bottom of the seventh, and here's the man who tagged up and came home. Kirk Gibson, a two-run home run, walk, and a single off Nettle's glove. Two for two. Big guy really coming alive today. Ball one. Gibson hitting 313 in the series. Couldn't wait. Could not wait. And he's hot about it. He talks to himself and he regroups and back in he goes. Leverett's trying to hold him with Nettles, Kennedy, and Bavacqua do up in the eighth inning against Lopez. A bunt in the air foul and out of play. And by the way, Hernandez is walking in to the Detroit dugout. And it could very well be that Lopez, who has been magnificent, will now entrust the last couple of innings to Willie. He's got Nettles and Kennedy from Aqua, two left hand hitters. Well, he's that close to coming in the game. One and two, the count of Gibson. Well, I tell you what, if they make that move, that's a tough move. Oh, oh that's they, that half of the money ooh. you get for worrying. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Kirk. Oh, that big jug had him dead. Rungi just said it was a good pitch. You take a look at it. Sorry, big guy. That was in there. And now Dick Williams is heading for the mound as Gibson heads for the dugout. Mutter, mutter. <laughs> Boy, he's hot. Yeah, he's mad. He can't take it out on anybody like you do on a football field. Yeah, that's right. You want to go hit somebody that's and there's right. nobody to hit. Take a look at it. Big breaking ball. He commits early. Look at that. Mm. Case closed. Leffert's out. Here comes the goose. And it's still Tigers four, Padres three. What does everybody want? Chicken. 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 Uh -huh. chicken? Here? When you want chicken, why go to a place that doesn't specialize in chicken? You've got a right to chicken done right. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do one thing. Chicken with a secret blend of herbs and spices. You've got a right to chicken done right. Now this is the place for chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken. Another bold move by the cavalry. Kemper's innovative budget payment plan for auto, home, or business insurance. Nothing beats it for convenience. Kemper frees you from heavy payments, lets you combine your auto, home, even business insurance into just one payment each month. Now, quality protection is easier to come by when you call the cavalry. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. Who has? Commanding power and total control at the instant effortless speed of light. Who else but RCA? Presenting the Digital Command Center, the total control remote control that operates this full spectrum TV and this video cassette recorder. 
Experience total control from the comfort of your favorite chair with the digital command center. Only from RCA, technology that excites the senses. In Ronald Reagan's America, everyone is comfortable and everything is fine. But in the real America, the one he doesn't see, people have to take a second job just to get by. Millions have no job at all. Old people worry about paying medical bills. Parents about sending kids to college. In the real America, millions are still trying to make it and need a fair chance. Is America back or can we do better? That's the debate. Mondale Ferraro, fighting for our future. So the goose is here, but as we mentioned, he's not leading. And what makes it odd to see him, of course, yesterday he needed work, so he pitched when the team was behind. The day they need him just to stay above water. They clocked him at 95 miles an hour warming up. <laughs> well, Lance Harris will face him with one out in the seventh. Four to three, Detroit. Fouled away. Harris singled twice fly to left in the fifth inning his fly ball was important he went deep enough to left to Martinez that Gibson could get the second and he lines it to back back goes Martinez gone Championship series where he was just rearing back and firing. Woo. One and one. But with all the speed and the clocking of the gun, the goose has been plucked here. It is five to three, Detroit. Breaking ball and he single to center. He might have even cracked his bat. A slider in on the hand. Against the Cubs with Sandberg on, Goose didn't even give a look, and he took off. I'm sure that the Tigers have made a note of that. Howard Johnson is swinging a bat. Uh, Howard Johnson will be coming up. Johnson is a switch hitter, and he'll go from the left side of the plate. This will be his first appearance in the World Series. I remember Sal Magley talking about pitching. He said it's like driving a car. If you keep driving at 70 miles an hour, pretty soon it seems pretty even. Then you drop it down to 50, 70 seems fast. So you've got to keep changing speeds to some degree. And 
and Goose is coming at 97, but it's 97, 97, 96, 97, and they've been able to sit on it. Einstein's theory of relativity even applies in baseball. And there goes the runner, ball one, the throw down, he's in there. Shades of Ryan Sandberg, Gossage never looked, never tried to hold him on. The ball was there in plenty of time, it seemed. Lemon with a head first slide. Now watch when he gets the ball. He just didn't get in behind him. Well, Lemon at second with two out. One ball and no strike. Howard going after a high pitch. You know, I remember years ago, I asked Jim Gilliam, the late Gilliam, what's the toughest thing about being a switch hitter? You know what he said? No. Getting hit by the ball because you have you're hitting backwards like Alice in the looking glass. Fastball, a broken bat, ground ball to Wiggins, boots it, and Lemons at third, and he took too much time in the first place. He's simply nonchalant that one, and that there's nothing you can say except it's an error, and the the house is starting to really crumble. Look at this. It's one thing to be cool, but that's being cold. I mean, he took forever to get to the ball. He waited for it. He could have charged it on the other half. And here is Evans now trying to put the Padres away. Tigers are at first and third. Two out, a run over. 5-3 Detroit. High fly ball. It's playable. Bobby Brown. However, the big blow, the home run by Lance Parrish. One run, two hits, and an error, two left. And as Parrish puts on the gear and Sparky whispers in his ear, the big guy takes the Tigers on the field, leading 5-3. You can sure have fun with radio control toys from Radio Shack. My friend Tommy likes to race his sports car with easy-to-use controls. Tim likes to haul sand in his pickup truck. Billy likes to climb hills with his tank or Jeep. But I like taking hairpin turns with my police motorcycle. Guess I got my reasons. Hi, Dad. Hi, son. Twelve radio control toys, each sold separately. Batteries not included. Only at Radio Shack. That's a big step, Tom. I'm still going to go to college, Dad, but after the Army. I thought you wanted to be an electrical engineer. I'll be learning about electronics. Then I can qualify for the Army College Fund. If you qualify, the Army College Fund will help you accumulate as much as $20,100 for tuition. So you're going to be a soldier? Be all that you can be. I'm an engineer. You can do it. Be a good one. In the Army. There are lots of ways to communicate over long distances, but with some, you may not be able to reach everywhere you want, anytime you want. And a faraway message may feel far away. But you can always count on AT&T, the only long-distance service that lets you call from anywhere to anywhere with operators standing by. And with AT&T, your calls will sound as close as next door. So why settle for anything less? AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Tonight, the epic of V continues with the final battle. And then the countdown begins for the thrilling premiere of V, the series. That is the Padre bullpen, and it is empty. The reason, basically, it is empty, not only the fact that Goose Gossage is going to close it out, win or lose, but remember, we're playing under the American League rules, the designated hitter. That means you don't have to hit for a pitcher, so there's no reason to have any more pitchers down there. Had this been a National League game, even with Gossage pitching, they might have had to hit for him. They would have had people in the pen. But not this year, not in this World Series, not with the DH. So it's standing room only in the dugout. Can you imagine taking Aurelio Lopez out of the game? It was amazing when he was in her. The last 14 pitches he made were strikes, and he only made 25 pitches. And 21 of them were for strikes, as I said, the last 14 in a row. It was incredible. Four strikeouts, three of them called. He just wind him up and he threw your strike. Greg Nettles, a strike on the inside corner. Naturally, in Sparky's thinking, Hernandez gets.
hits back to back left hand batters here. But it's not that much of a gamble especially now with a two run lead. Oh and one. High fly ball into shallow right center. A trio of Tigers Whitaker. The kids would say that's unreal. Jerry Kennedy grounded out, hit into a force play, hit back to the box. Now back. Padres are starting to wonder, doesn't anybody miss the strike zone? After looking at Lopez, and now Hernandez has done nothing but go right after the hitters. Well, that's what you want your relief pitcher to do. Throw strikes with something on it. Stay away from that base on balls. That's what kills you. 0 oh and 1. At Whitaker. The last Padre to get aboard was Nettles, who singled in the fifth inning. We now have two out in the eighth. 5 3 Detroit. Bread and butter pitch, pitch for Hernandez is a screwball. Look at his elbow, his arm. He turns it over to rotation. Kennedy hit it pretty hard. He didn't get it in far enough. Rakeem did that to Williams in the 46 World Series. Left hand hitter, left hand pitcher, break it in on the hands. He kind of got it out over the plate. Here's Bavacqua, slide to left, walked and struck out. 0 for 2. Fastball and a high drive in the left field. Herndon looking up, and this one gone. So after we show you his specialty screwball, he throws Pavacqua a fastball. We got a game again. Tigers five, Padres four. And when you hit him that hard, you're looking for it. And Pavacqua is a smart hitter. He figured he'd get ahead of me because the other two guys didn't stay up there too long. I'll look for the fastball and pop it, and he did, and they're back in the game. Just imagine if Kennedy's ball gets by Whitaker. Here is Carmelo Martinez, singled and struck out twice. Strike. A lot going on here, but we certainly want to mention that he's now in the game. Dave Bergman took over at first base for Darrell Evans here in the eighth inning. 0-1. Curveball hit down the left field line. Herndon was deep. He has to come up and get it. Martinez is going to be way for second and then quits and comes back. But as they have done throughout the series, the Padres keep battling back. A lot of other runners, I think, would have had a double on that. Martinez does not run well. He's watching it all the way. He makes a big turn. They're telling him to go on for second, but he stops right there, and they're going to put in a pinch runner for him. Luis Salazar will run for Carmelo Martinez. But he could easily be going to second base, except for Martinez. Remember we mentioned earlier about the ball that Templeton hit. The grass is so deep in the outfield. Templeton was muttering in the dugout. In any other ballpark, that ball goes to the wall. In this instance, Instead of it going all the way down the line, Sparky saw it die and saw Herndon come up with it. So the tying run is at first. Bergman holding on Salazar, and Templeton now crosses over to hit right handed. Templeton is 0 for 3 hitting right handed. All of his action has come from the other side of the plate, but he has more power from this side. His three home runs this year, all three were hit as a right-handed batter. And if he does something wonderful for San Diego, the question will be, why did you take Lopez out? One ball, no strike. Fastball, he was late. You think that's probably another problem about being a switch hitter playing the whole game swinging left handed then going around right handed and having a little sluggish swing that way. 
I don't know how to answer that. I never did yeah, it. Right. I would think it would be, but uh, then again, he's been doing it all year. Of course, uh, Hernandez is a little bit uh, he's a little bit quicker than you think. He's deceptive with his fastball because of that screwball. Got to look for the Scroogey, I think. 1-1. One, one. No fastball, and he was late again. He got it in on a hand. See, that's the thing. You got to look for his fastball, and he throws you enough screwballs to offset you. I mean, you really... I tell you, when you got more than one pitch, it's just difficult to do. You saw with Gossi, he's just throwing fastballs. They sit on that, and if they get it, you get a pretty good cut. With this guy, you can't be that sure. Salazar, the tying run at first. Tigers five runs. Padres four. Two out, eighth inning. Fouled away. Beat that right into the ground. The grub worms would have had it. That's what Charlie Dressen used to say. A worm killer. Worm killer. One and two. It's straight down. He beats down on it. I guess on the artificial turf, it's a moth killer. <laughs> One and two. And they got him picked off. Bergman goes to Whitaker. The time run is picked off. downtown San Diego for light beer from Miller and I'm telling you these Padre fans are really fired up hey anything you fans want to tell those folks down in Detroit let's take it down to Norm Cash in Detroit hey Randy see these Tiger fans they might have something to say about that This is a Mustang LX that comes with reclining bucket seats. That comes with AM FM stereo with premium sound. Comes with power steering, power brakes, power door locks. Comes with interval wipers, speed control, and styled road wheels. And it goes for less than $6,900. Mustang LX. Have you driven the best built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? The essence of hitting, George Brett. Some guys say it's the rhythm, reading the pitch. For me, it's a film that says I'm going downtown. The essence of shaving. This is Atra by Gillette. It pivots so the twin blades stay on your beard longer. But what Atra is all about is the feeling that says you just got Gillette's best shave. Gillette, the essence of shaving. They are the prodigies of racing's true champions, the sons and daughters of Northern Dancer, of Seattle Slough, of Alidar. This fall, the bloodline will be tested, and new champions will be born. The Breeders' Cup, November 10th on NBC. Salazar, like most ball players, slides on only one side, so he really slides into that tag. It's the rare player who can slide either way. If he hooks on his right hip, he gets away from that tag. Looked like his only chance to make the play was to take his body onto the outfield and grab it with his hand. Right. Oh, and one to Marty Castillo, and a little business. Remember, all the stations along the network at the end of this half inning, in the bottom of the eighth. We'll have an extra station identification. Fastball. Oh, one and two. The question of Salazar, though, is if you're the tying run and you are going to steal, you can't get picked off. You've got to get thrown out if you are indeed running. And the team with the better overall speed, better than perhaps the Cubs, pays for the fact that Martinez does not run well. If Martinez ran well, he had an easy double. And instead, he has to stop with a single. Salazar runs for him, and he's picked off. And you really get down to two plays now. The inability to get Wiggins home in the first inning. And the pop fly that was caught by Wiggins instead of Gwynn that allowed Gibson to come home. They'll haunt San Diego all winter. Well, that last play by Salazar is not exactly going to put him to sleep. <laughs> 
Two and two. Three and two. Kirk Gibson has been vitally involved. He had a two run home run and he scored in the fifth inning on the fly ball to Wiggins. And Gossage walks Castillo, opening up the bottom of the eighth. Whitaker is the batter. Remember, Castillo singled in the sixth inning. They didn't have Whitaker bunting. They had him swing away, and Garvey turned to double play at first, with Trammell to follow, and their lead cut to one again. We'll see whether they have Whitaker bunting. Nettles, one step up in front of the bag, fouled away. On one. Goose made a throw to first base. If nothing else, letting Castillo know that I know you're there. Anderson has tremendous faith in Whitaker, even against steam or heat like Gossett. Being left-handed, he might just let him hack away. We'll see. Trammell on deck. Yep, he's got him around. Bunning a one-hopper to Nettles. He's going to go to Templeton. He's off the bag. He missed the bag. He wasn't expecting the throw. He was off the bag. I can't believe what's happening. It's like a... Great busters. I mean, the gremlins have hit the field. Guys are not catching fly balls. He assumed he was going to first base. Now watch this. Nettles, he doesn't hesitate, and Templeton is standing in front of the bag. He's in front of the bag. He got caught in a cookie jar. Look at the look on Templeton. You don't have to say anything. He's so shocked. Oh, my he, goodness. He can't believe he did that himself. He was in front of the bag. I mean, it's a real Halloween finish. There's the bunt to Gossage, and he has to throw to Wiggins. First base open, and they will walk Gibson, I believe, with Harris coming up. There's no error, by the way. And his rule to sacrifice fielder's choice. But Templeton knows how it scored in his own scorebook. It figures they'll take the bat right out of Gibson's hand. And now Dick Williams is going to go out there because Kennedy held up four fingers and then went out to the mound. So well, let's see. Well, you gotta you gotta believe that he's gonna put him on with four pitches. But if he starts to fool around and throw a couple pitches and get a couple strikes, don't you know that Sparky will be screaming about that Raleigh Fingers Johnny Bench play? That's right. You have to turn the clock back with two strikes on Bench. Dick went out to the mound, caught the fingers. Tennis held his hand out. Zip was going to put him aboard. Suddenly, Tennis dropped into a crouch. Bingo, strike three. Well, they're making a decision here, and Williams is in charge. You know what's interesting? Kirk Gibson made his major league debut, his very first at bat in the big leagues, against Goose Gossett. That's a great way to break in. And Gossett struck him out on three pitches. Blew him away, Sparky says. And maybe because of that, Gossett is saying, I can get him. Well, we'll see. Ball one. The infield is up. They give Gibson the left field foul line. Brown is in left. And there it goes!
distinct feeling that Goose Gossage talked Dick Williams out of the intentional walk. And that'll be another one of those things that'll haunt Dick Williams because it looked like they were going to maybe set up the double play, but Williams was doing all the talking. I know Kennedy figured to walk and he held four fingers up. Saddest words of tongue and pen. What might have been for San Diego and this crowd in Detroit delirious. Kurt Gibson has five RBI. The record is six. Bobby Richardson against the Pirates in 1960. Oh. Kennedy got bitten by that one. They are singing goodbye. Epic of V continues with the final battle. And then the countdown begins for the thrilling premiere of V, the series. The Mitsubishi Mighty Max has always been an excellent value, but this year we've outdone ourselves. We've added new carpeting, a new instrument cluster, tinted glass, a cargo light, radial tires and trim rings, a double wall cargo box, an 18 gallon fuel tank, and a lot more. The only thing we didn't add was a big price tag. At only $57.49, the new Mitsubishi Mighty Max is tough to beat and easy to own. For the next 30 seconds, Burger King will conduct a test of your appetite alert system. Right now, Burger King restaurants in your area are offering the King Combo, a juicy flame-broiled Whopper, large order of crisp golden fries, and an ice-cold Pepsi. The King Combo, all for a special price. To complete this test, please report to Burger King. Only $1.99. Prices may vary. At first glance, all airlines may appear to be the same. But one gives you a special way to fly. An airline so large it carries over 30 million people a year. Yet so personalized, you can reserve your seat a year in advance. We have the seat you want, Mr. Martin. In a world of airlines, one airline, American Airlines, can make your trip something special. Welcome aboard. Something special in the air. The $100,000 final, 6.30 tonight on Name That Tune. Show you how things can change. Does this man look like the same man who was so angry in the seventh inning? And does this look like Gary Templin, who was left at the plate when Salazar was picked off and was left in front of the bag on the sacrifice? Fouled away. That tells it all, doesn't it, Joe? Yes, it does. Oh, and two to Gary Templin. The Tigers three out away from the world's championship. The Tigers, as we mentioned earlier, clinch the division at home, clinch the pennant at home, and they're now trying to clinch the World Series at home. First team to do that since the 69 Mets. Screwball fouled away. Deck, Bruce Bosey. He'll bat for Bobby Brown. Now back, high fastball.
If pictures tell a story, look at the Padres. Ground ball to Trammell. Bruce Boshi, born in France. 29 year old. He's the backup catcher to Terry Kennedy. Fastball. This is just a gesture by Williams, I'm sure, to get him into the World Series. Something to tell the kids. On one. Eight four Tigers. One out, ninth inning. Curve ball and he hit it foul, but he had a good rip at it. 0 oh, and 2. One of the few curve balls we've seen Hernandez throw. And the Tigers, two outs away from the bubbly. That's Aurelio Lopez without the hat. Boshi off the bench singles to left and the Padres one last chance to fight back. Ron Renicky the brother of Baltimore's Gary Renicky gets a chance to get in the World Series in 81 he had hurt his ankle and couldn't play in the Dodger Yankee World Series. This year he wasn't eligible until McReynolds hurt his wrist. So you see fate has a way of evening up I guess. And here's Wiggins. Ball one. From day one of the season the Tigers have been in first place. Incredible team. Incredible year. And this is the capper. Fouled away. One out, ninth inning. Hernandez with the luxury of a four run lead. Scroogey that stayed very high and ran away. One out, ninth inning. Fastball popped in the air. Lands Paris. Again, we'll take you into the locker room after this game. If the Tigers hold on to any part of this four-run lead, and the way this crowd is going, we're just going to be quiet and let you listen and enjoy it to your heart's content. Johnny Grubb, preparing for the onslaught, took his cap off and put it in his shirt, and that's why most of them have their caps off. They'll be running out there. Fans love the game. Even Trzuski, he doesn't like to take his head off. He hasn't got that much grass.
Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By RCA, creators of video technology that excites the senses. By IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. And by Light Beer from Miller, an official beer sponsor of Major League Baseball. More about today's game in a moment. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. United's Royal Pacific service to the Far East. It's truly world class. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by Hilton. When American business hits the road, American business stops at Hilton, America's business address. Tonight on Knight Rider, a girl's in trouble, and Michael and Kit go undercover on the gridiron to save her. I really don't enjoy this game. Make some extra points tonight. People are running from bank to bank, looking for the perfect CD. Someone should tell all these people that there's a place that offers six-month CDs at rates higher than most banks. California Federal. High rates, short-term, long on security. One phone call will convince all of you. When it comes to CDs, it pays to check with us. At first glance, all airlines may appear to be the same, but one gives you a special way to fly. An airline so large it carries over 30 million people a year, yet so personalized you can reserve your seat a year in advance. We have the seat you want, Mr. Martin. In a world of airlines, one airline, American Airlines, can make your trip something special. Welcome aboard. Something special in the air. First story I ever got on the network was from somebody who just called me and said, Hi, I, I've seen you on the air. I feel like I can trust you. Let me tell you my story. We work all day, every day, uncovering what we consider to be the most interesting thing that happened in this town today. And that's news to me. People make the difference at News 4 LA. People like Kirsty Wise. stories are out there, and if they people are, understand that we're okay. interested, maybe yeah. they'll call us. People make it special. News 4 LA. Sports highlights with Andy Lascano tonight at 6 on News 4 LA. It is baseball's answer to New Year's Eve in Times Square. This one, vintage 1984. Tiger Stadium in Detroit, home of the world champion Detroit Tigers. And with that, let's go to the champion's locker room and to Bob Costas. All right, Vin, thank you very much. On the platform, the new commissioner of baseball, Peter Uberoff, the former owner, longtime owner of the Tigers, John Fetzer, the new owner of the ball club, Tom Monahan, the manager, the first to win championships from both leagues, Sparky Anderson, the MVP of the series, Alan Trammell, for the presentation of the championship trophy, the commissioner. It was great baseball, a great team, and it's a pleasure to give this trophy to the chairman of the board, or maybe of all of baseball, John Fetzer. John? <laughs> Well, this is uh, the climax of 28 years of owning the ball club, and I've just loved every minute of it. I love all the guys that are here, and I want to tell you right now, I'm happy to turn this cup over to Tom Monahan as the new owner of the Tigers, and Tom, I hope you win a lot of them as the next 30 years goes to you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Fetzer. I, uh, uh, the one thing I feel right now is a tremendous uh, gratitude to you for giving me this great opportunity, you know. I'll be forever grateful. This is your team. Uh, this, this should be your trophy. I love all of them out there, and these boys are all your boys from now on. You take them, and you go all the way with them every year you can. No, I want you around. <laughs> I'll be here as long as I can. Uh, you'll be here a long time. Let's turn now to Sparky Anderson. 104 victories in the regular season, Sparky. You had on the postseason, you lost only one. The composite is 111 and 59. Bobby, I don't care about none of that. The only thing I care is the public could see to me, one of the most class teams and people that I've ever been around. The young man that won the most valuable player, I say it, I don't care what nobody said. He's the best player in baseball. We fell that way. That's what we're going to say. He deserves everything. And every when Allen speaks, he speaks for this team. I'll see you later. <laughs> Sparky will be back. I think there's a phone call waiting for him eventually. We'll turn to Allen Trammell. Nine for 20, including a couple of homers, the MVP. Well, thank you, Bob. Uh, 
I'll tell you what, I wish we could divide it up between all of us. I know that Jack was very deserving, Kirk Gibson. It's just one of these things that everybody's been contributing for our ball club. I just happen to have a good series, but uh, it's divided among all of us, that's for sure. Alan, yesterday's ball game, that had to be the thrill of a lifetime. The two two-run homers, the four RBIs. You're no question, but this is even special. Right here, this is what it's all about. We're going to get that ring. This is the most important day of my life. I'm going to celebrate. Let's see if we've got the telephone ready. Are we set with the call? We are. Can we get Sparky Anderson back up here? Sparky. Jim Campbell, the president of the ball club, is also here. And on the line, I believe, the president of the United States. Sparky. Mr. President, I know, I know that you are a great Cubs fan, but I know if you seen these kids, you'd be a Tiger fan. Mr. President. But if you knew around these Tigers, you'd love them more. Tremendously difficult to hear the conversation. Oh, I'll tell you what. Now we'll sit down to some hard rooting. <laughs> we'll return to the Tiger Clubhouse in just a moment. Stay with us. Staying in shape gives my business career an extra edge. Speed Stick deodorant gives you an edge, too. Speed Stick's the wide stick. Gives you man size odor protection all day. The wide stick feels good going on, and it takes just a few strokes. It's a great value, too. In this world, a little extra edge is all you need. Let the wide stick give you the edge. Speed Stick deodorant. By Menon. A new idea like a pebble in a pond, can change the world around it. Technology from a company called TRW puts ideas to work. And when an idea gets going, there's no end to where it can lead. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. I'm in the Padres locker room. Obviously, it's a bit more subdued. I'm with Tony Gwynn, who was the Majors leading hitter this year. And Tony, I think everybody wants to know about that key play in the fifth inning. Did you lose the ball? Could yeah. you pick it up? You lost I it. I lost. Uh, as soon as the ball got up over the stands, I lost it. And uh, you know, Wiggy had a long way to go to get it. And once he got it, you know, he really couldn't really plant himself and throw because Gibson could run down the line. And, you know, we couldn't get anything on it. And you know, I, I hate that it turned out to be the key play in the game, but that's what happened. Can you sum up your feelings about this club and what happened over this five-game series? Well, I think we're disappointed because uh, I really don't believe we played like we were capable of playing. But, you know, nobody really expected us to be here. And, you know, there are 24 other teams sitting at home watching this, and we had an opportunity to play in it. We didn't play well, but, uh, you know, we got to keep our heads high because we had a heck of a season this year. And, uh, you know, sure, we'd love to have won it, but we didn't. So uh, I guess we have to work a little bit harder next year. Okay, congratulations on the fine season in the batting championship. Okay, Tony. thank you. Okay, let's go back to Bob Costas now in the Tiger locker room. Bob? All right, Lenny, thanks very much. In case you couldn't hear it earlier over the din, the MVP is Alan Trammell with his 9 for 20 and his two home runs. But either one of these guys could have gotten it too. Jack Morris, a couple of victories in your first World Series. The throw, the weight. The work, it's all worth it. This is uh, the greatest moment of my baseball career. I'm just so proud of all these guys right here because without their help, I wouldn't be here. And I just really feel great about it. There were a few low moments during an otherwise terrific season for you. This has to make it a sweet ending. Well, this is what I planned all spring. I, you know, I made a few statements early in the year, but it's only showed the confidence that I had in this ball club. The greatest thing about it is we were able to come through and win it all. Jack, congratulations. Kirk Gibson, you were kidding me about being nervous before the series. Didn't look like you had any jitters today. You crushed a couple. Well, there's a little bit of luck involved, and it's, I've come a long way, like Jack says. There's been high, there's high moments, and there's been some low moments, but this tops it off. We're the best in the world. We're the world champions, and it just says a lot about the great guys, and uh, I heard about the MVP is Alan Trammell. Uh, you know, people don't realize Alan Trammell's been playing hurt all year. He's going to have to have surgery on his knee, and they're going to have to go in and look on his shoulder. So I'd personally like to congratulate Alan Trammell. It just shows the kind of makeup that we have 
uh, and kind of ball players we have on this team. Kirk Gibson, congratulations to you. The 1984 world champions are the Detroit Tigers. And I guess it's appropriate enough to say to this room full of happy Detroit ball players, bless you boys. You're the 1984 world champions. certainly hope you enjoyed the trip. Executive producer Michael Weissman leading the way, choosing the shots, and a great choice he made. From the nights in San Diego to the weekend here at Tiger Stadium. The coordinating producer, boy, he has seen as many thrills in baseball World Series play as any man alive, and that would be our coordinating producer, Harry Coyle. The World Series has been produced. Boy, has it ever been produced. And a roll of drums, a doff of the cap, and a low bow from the waist to our producer, George Finkel, directed by Harry Coyle. There were so many people involved, not just with the production of one game, but every day in the wee small hours, all the way back up to the other side of the clock. There are over 250 people whose names are being listed, and there are even more than that behind the scenes who made vital contributions. And as if it's a fitting climax to the hopes of a fine young San Diego Padre team, it is raining in Detroit. The free game, all of the juicy anticipation that we shared with you, both the great moments from the past and the prospects of things to come, produced so very well by Les Dennis. And the free game and the replay, giving us those wonderful moments again and again so that we could study them for the sheer delight of just looking at great baseball. That would be director Andy Rosenberg. The replay producer, Kenneth Edmondson. You talk about technical work. Imagine the work that takes place in two different ballparks from the West Coast almost to the East Coast. Well, the technical director in charge of equipment and manpower, Lenny Stucker. And the replay technical director. The replay of the fly ball to right field, of Gibson tagging up, of Gary Templeton standing in front of second base. So many great moments replayed. Hats off to our technical director, Bill Topin. And how about the 25 Tigers? with the manager, Sparky Anderson, his pitching coach, Roger Craig, his baseline coaches, Dick Trususki and Alex Kramitz, coach Billy Consolo. He and Sparky were kids on the sand lot, eight years old, and they climbed to the pinnacle in baseball fortune. And a hitting coach, Gates Brown. And hey, don't walk away from this series without saluting the comeback kids from San Diego. They went down, but they have a man on every shot they had. Dick Williams and his fine staff. Norm Sherry is pitching coach. And his baseline coaches, Jack Kroll, Ossie Virgil. To the Deacon, Deacon Jones. And to the 25 who wore the brown and gold so well throughout the year. Who won the division down on their knees, battle back to win three straight against the Cubs and beat the outstanding pitcher in the National League after spotting him three runs. How about them Padres as well? And how about baseball and the World Series? on NBC, Knight Rider, followed by V, the final battle. That's all tonight, right here on NBC. So whatever you do, don't go away. In the rain at Tiger Stadium, 
one of the brightest moments in Tiger history as they defeat the Padres 8 to 4 and become the world champions of 1984. For Joe Garagiola, this is Ben Scully wishing you a very pleasant good evening. Come to think of it, have a great year. The World Series is a special presentation of NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television.